until Labor Day. If you want to be successful, you got to be in shape. Successful. Kansas City, how are they doing it? They won the first two in this series. Pitching and defense, supposedly, but they have scored runs each of the last two nights. The pitching is among the tops in the American League. Defense, same story. The offense lacks, but they got the runs, runs on the board the last two nights. And, Paul, maybe for Baltimore, second half getting pitching back, more consistency? It's going to be a big help for the Orioles. They had Ben McDonald work very effective here last night. His first game off the disabled list. Kevin Brown, not off the DL. He's expected to start here on Monday. Scott Erickson makes his second start since coming over in the trade from the Minnesota Twins, so that Baltimore starting rotation, at least, has a different look headed into the second half. A couple of teams, both of whom have got a shot at least at making that wild card berth, especially KC. Well, Baltimore wants to win their division. They think they can catch Boston. Kansas City needs to pick up on their winning percentage to get back in that wild card hunt. All right, a couple of good starters tonight. Scott Erickson will be on the mound, making just his second start since the trade, and arguably the league's number one pitcher, Kevin Apier, will be on the mound for the Kansas City Royals. The man keeping an eye on baseball tonight at our headquarters is John Saunders. All right, guys, thanks a lot, and welcome to our Baseball Night in America studios. I'm John Saunders, as mentioned. In addition to the game you'll see here tonight on ABC and your local station, we will, of course, keep you up to date on all the games taking place in Major League Baseball. You get the entire picture. Now, as you know, record heat throughout the country, also thunderstorms threatening in many ballparks, so it should be an interesting night, including Mo Vaughn missing his second consecutive game. So this man, Jose Canseco, will have to pick up the slack for the Red Sox against Texas. The Kansas City Royals, Kevin Apier is fourth shot at win number 12. The Royals try and stay in the race. They'll face Baltimore. And the National League co-leader in home runs, 20 home runs for Ron Gant. The Reds go up against the Chicago Cubs. And five-time batting champion Tony Gwynn, who's hitting 361, looking for a sixth title. The Padres battle the Braves. Tonight on Baseball Night in America, we'll keep you up to date. And your game is coming up right after this. Baltimore Orioles have taken the field. Welcome back, everybody. Camden Yards as the Orioles get set to take on the Royals. The Royals who have won the first two games of this series. Let's take a look at our lineup for the Kansas City Royals brought to you by Budweiser. Keith Lockhart will be at third base leading off. Tom Goodwin, the speedster in center field, bats second. Wally Joyner at first base batting third. Bob Hamlin's got the hammer going again. The DH roll for him. John Nunley, interesting story in left field. Edgar Caceres will make the start at second base tonight. David Howard is the shortstop. Brent Main will be doing the catching in a late addition to this lineup. Phil Hyatt will make the start in right field. He wasn't going to play, but Vince Coleman, who was going to lead off in this lineup, has come out. Paul Splitorf with an injury. It's going to keep him out of the game. He was at the ballpark early this afternoon for some extra work, but hurt himself during practice. He is a late scratch. Scott Erickson making his second start, as you mentioned, with the Orioles since coming over from the Twins. He won that start. These are his season's numbers. A lot of hits allowed per innings pitched. Not the strikeout guy that he was when he first came to the big leagues in the early 90s. They're excited about his possibilities here in Baltimore, now pitching on natural grass in his home park for the first time in his career. Scott, how about the uh, repertoire that we'll see tonight from Erickson? Well, he's a sinker, ball pitcher, slider, occasional straight changeup. I guess the thing that has turned his career around to a negative side is the fact that he doesn't throw as hard as when he first got here. Still gets the movement, but it's not the sharp sinking movement that he had early on. Both these teams, good defensive ball clubs, and the first two games have been some pretty good defensive plays. Brady Anderson makes the start in left field. The speedster Goodwin will be in center field making the start. Hammonds around in right. You've got Gomez, Ripken, Alexander, and Palmero in the infield. Oils and Erickson form the battery. You see Anderson making his first error since July 31 of last year. In last night's game, he committed that error. Not many. Officially, they're telling us 101 degrees. Jim Evans will be happy to be working behind the plate. Larry McCoy, Rick Reed, John Hirschbeck are the umpires for tonight's game. And we are ready to go. Settle back and enjoy. And the first pitch by Erickson is up high for a ball. Keith Lockhart leading it off. 30-year-old rookie making the start at third base for the Kansas City Royals. And successfully down to first, played by Rafael Palmero. Erickson covering. Lockhart's retired. One away. Gary, one thing we might look for tonight defensively out of the Orioles, and they've done it the entire series. They play way off the line, both on first base and third base, early on in the ball games. Try to take away the hole on the right and left side of the infield, and it paid off on that first ground ball. Palmero, a couple steps to the left of where he'd normally play, in perfect position. And, uh, Paul, if we see Scott Erickson on tonight, we're going to see a lot of ground balls. Nobody throws more ground balls 
as a pitcher in the American League than the man you're looking at right there, the 27-year-old right-hander. Tom Goodwin, four for his last ten, the leading base stealer in the American League. Takes the pitch down low for a ball. This 26-year-old can fly. And he's been doing it this year. He and Vince Coleman, one and two in that department of stolen bases. Ripken playing in. We'll have to hustle it over. Couple of ground balls, two down. Cal Ripken charging on that ground ball earlier in the series. There was a similar ball hit to him, a couple steps to his right that Goodwin beat out. So Cal wanted to make sure he got that first step off in a big hurry. Two down, base is empty. There you see Erickson in that ratio, 2 8 5. Ground balls to air out ratio, which, as we said, is tops in the American League. Although, as Paul mentioned, he is very hittable. Here is Wally Joyner, five game hit streak, three for eight in this series. And the Kansas City first baseman takes the strike. Joyner, one of the sweet swings in baseball. 300 mark, not an unusual place for Wally Joyner to be at as far as the average is concerned. Good off speed delivery inside to him. Foul tipped for the strike. Erickson coming into this game, 47 strikeouts with the 34 walks and that five and six mark. And perspiring heavily, but not for long. He gets the strikeout and retires the side in order. Good start for Erickson. First time at home, and they like what they see already. Baltimore Oriole team that right now finds itself seven games out of first place with Boston leading Detroit in second. They still think they've got a shot at it in a division many feel may be the most winnable. Take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Budweiser. Brady Anderson will be leading it off in left field. Manny Alexander at second base. Rafael Palmero at first. Cal Ripken the shortstop. Harold Baines the DH. Leo Gomez at third. Jeffrey Hammonds in right. Chris Hoyles does the catching and Curtis Goodwin another speedster in center field you see that number on those hitters one two and nine but man they got their work cut out for him tonight Paul Slidor. Kevin Apier gets the start here tonight for the Royals he leads the league in starts innings pitched batting average against is just over 200 and Apier has just had a wonderful first half of the season look at that 85 hits allowed and over 121 innings pitched strikeouts to walks well they're about three to one. He has won more games than any other pitcher in the American League he is fifth in ERA first in innings pitched second in strikeouts but he has lost his last three decisions not only Goodwin and Hyatt will be in the outfield Lockhart Howard Caceres and Joyner in the infield with Brent Main being the battery mate for Kevin Apier good defensive team Paul excellent good defensive team that's the one thing that has kept them in the race the pitchers throw strikes they keep the ball in the ballpark and these guys catch it at every position out there. There's not an average major league glove out there. Everybody's above average and they cover their positions pretty well. No pitching staff minds that would you say they like that <laughs> <laughs> especially at Kauffman Stadium where they brought the fences in 15 feet <laughs> spoken by the winningest pitcher in Kansas City history. My partner Paul Splitor. here is Brady Anderson leading it off making the start in left field again tonight Anderson who Bats from the left side ready to go against Kevin Apier and goes after the first pitch. Will we see a lot of that tonight with Apier throwing as many strikes as he does. I would think that these hitters would want to work those pitchers a little bit. Now these guys usually come out throwing strikes and Apier will get his pitch count up a little bit because he's tough to catch up with if he'll give up a lot of foul balls here tonight the Orioles can work him but I would see their club come to the plate maybe take a pitch or two and risk getting down in the count just to try to wear this guy down. Three and four lifetime against the Orioles. Anderson shows bunt takes the pitch up high. Well how much will this heat take out of the pitchers in particular tonight. Now we said the temperature that we have on the reading that they use downstairs for the field was 96 but apparently downtown the official temperature is 101 at game time tonight. And it's about 119 with the humidity swung on and missed one and two. Well these guys are excellent athletes. They're big and strong. They're six three way anywhere from. 210 to 225 pounds regular starters eat up innings that's what their job has been on their respective rotations since they've come to the big league so these are big strong guys look for the pitch counts to get to 110 120 if they're effective here tonight sure. Brady Anderson waiting Apier's delivery is a fastball that misses inside to him it'll even it up two balls and two strikes 
Scott Erickson is sitting in the doorway because the air conditioning comes out of that runway onto the field. So at his back right now, some pretty good cool air. Down to first, fair ball over the bag and into the corner. Chased down by Hyatt on his way to second base. Brady Anderson with a leadoff double. Gary, it's balls like this that has turned Brady Anderson's career around the last three years. When he first came to the big leagues, he was a punch and judy hitter. Just bloop it over the infield. But three years ago, he got bigger and stronger and learned how to hit a little bit more. Got the bat head out in front and became a little bit more of a pull hitter. Even pull power. Hit a home run here in the first game of this four-game series. So Brady Anderson is now a, a leadoff guy with some sock in his bat. And 14 doubles. Mighty good number for a leadoff batter. So now Kevin Apier and his infield will take a look around to see whether or not Manny Alexander will lay one down here or not. Alexander's six for his last 29 has struggled a bit at the plate still with a fine 276 average. They are playing the bunt at third and he does show bunt takes the slider away. Lockhart was cheating in so did Joyner at first. You see Lockhart staying in at third base and Joyner's in front of the bag and he'll be on the grass by the time the ball gets to the plate on Manny Alexander. Alexander has picked up three sacrifice hits thus far this season. 24 year old six years in the minors trying to move Anderson up from second base again shows bunt takes strike one and one. And Alexander just a rookie hitting number two for the Orioles in their lineup primarily because he's the best possibility for them. They don't have a, a true number two type hitter. He's learning to take some pitches to give a base dealer a chance to possibly steal a base. He's a decent hit and run man and as you mentioned right here they're going to call on him to probably bunt. Does not show bunt that time and takes the pitch away. Two balls and one strike. And that will bring a discussion up. <laughs> he may have missed a sign on that one. He did not square around at all on it and uh, immediately a look into the dugout to make sure the sign in fact may have been on and they're going to make sure he knows this time one way or the other. Bill Regan first year coach probably giving the signs although you never know. It was funny before the game hoping the second half would be a little better than the first because he finally may get a pitching staff together. It will make life a lot simpler. You'd like to trot out four or five guys that are going to get you a consistent six innings so you don't have to get into their bullpen. Yasina got knocked out here in the first game in the very first inning, had the shortest outing of his career, two thirds of an inning. But Arthur Rose came in and struck out 10 the rest of the way and got it to the ninth. Well, he sure wasn't bunting there, and there's no play for Brett Bain. That's going to go back into the seats, two balls and two strikes. The Kansas City Royals in the first two games having won them have put up 16 runs in the two games. Now this is a team that is dead last in runs scored in the American League. Well they're dead last in home runs hit too but they got the ball out of the ballpark. This is a hitter friendly ballpark and the Royals in a couple of the home runs have taken it the opposite way. Bob Hamlin hit one out to left field at the 365 sign there in the left field bleachers. Gary Gaetti had a key home run in, in game one. He hit it over the scoreboard in right field. So when you've got hitters going the opposite way and still getting it out of the yard you know you got a cozy park and that's exactly what they got here at Boy, Camden Yard. This has been one hasn't it? That's Fans great love place. it. Players love it. Broadcasters love it. The beautiful ballpark has been said so many times and they continue to pack him in. Foul back again. Apier doing battle here. Manny Alexander the number two hitter down there at second base. Brady Anderson getting a pretty good lead. Infield has opened it up pretty good at second and short not playing it towards the middle so he's walking off a good lead. He's up there at 90 miles an hour. Kevin Apier has three pitches that are all well above major league average fastball around 90 hard slider and a very hard split finger pitch. A lot of hitters think it's a spitball because it's thrown so hard it's not like your typical splitter or forkball. Now we know nobody in the game throws a spitter or ever has. Yeah, but if you were going to, this would be a good night. <laughs> it's already applied. <laughs> Just put your hand on the ball, you'll have all you need. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. It is going to be a shirt drenching night. There'll be a few jerseys gone through by more than one player. Brady Anderson gets his lead off second base, moving in behind me now. Howard trying to cut it down a little bit. 2 2 delivery again. Hit the batter, him. It hit him. 
And man, that was about as far behind as you can go. It looks like it caught him on the right arm as Kevin Apier hits Manny Alexander on the 2 2 count. This is either that slider or split finger pitch that got away. Fastball would have been tailing up and into him, and that wasn't the case as we get another look. Looks like they're going to try to go outer half of the plate, but that's just a ball that squirted out of his hands. We talked about the spitball here tonight and the moisture on the hands. A lot of times that will happen unless you use the rosin bag, use the front of your uniform. Because that uniform's not going to stay dry very long. Kevin Apier doesn't mind coming inside. That is the sixth batter that he has hit this season. So now runners on at first and second. Still nobody out. And here is an ever dangerous Rafael Palmero. His left hander continues to sock the hits here in Baltimore as he did in Texas, hitting 287. Takes the off speed pitch up high for a ball. So dangerous territory here for Apier in the first inning as the Orioles threaten. And a good clutch hitter, Rafael Palmero, 308 with runners in scoring position this year, even better than his overall 287 batting average. Two on and nobody out. Turns that one over, foul tipped it into the mitt of Maine. One ball, one strike. Rafael Palmero brought on here with a big contract to Baltimore. Give them that big bat middle of that lineup in that three hole in particular and he is not disappointed eight years pitch to him a fly ball center field good one tagging up at second base Brady Anderson throw comes in cut off by Howard Anderson will move up Rafael Palmero retired on the fly ball to center one away but the Orioles still have runners at first and third baseball night at America is brought to you by Chevrolet the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day genuine Chevrolet by Beachwood Age Budweiser the king of beers this butts for you and by Pizza Hut makers of stuffed crust pizza it's hard to resist eating it crust first great to have you with us on the premier evening and the premier games baseball night in America on the baseball network Gary Thorne and Paul Splitorf with you, and here's the man. Cal Ripken, despite all that swirls around him as he chases Lou Gehrig, still putting up some incredible offensive numbers. He is 10th in the league in hits coming into tonight's play with that 289 average. First and third. Bottom of the first, one down. Ripken takes the breaking ball for a strike. So Paul the count continues Everett Scott has been forgotten he's the man who held it before Lou Gehrig and Cal Ripken on his way to doing it in 13 consecutive years without missing a game down to 50 to tie one more after that to set the new record Ripken takes the breaking ball on the outside corner Apier and Ripken turns around and looks at Jim Evans. And guys maybe not, more than one reason for that. They've got, not gotten along real well so far in this series. In game one, there was a close play at second base. It looks like the Royals could have gotten a break on that call. And those guys locked up for about the next inning and a half. Already tired of each other tonight. You told me before the game it might not take long. <laughs> you were right. First at bat, 0-2 count. And Ripken didn't even bother to stay looking ahead. He turned right around and took a good look at Jim Evans' home plate umpire. 0-2 to Ripken, protecting the plate, pops it up, foul. It'll stay at 0-2. At the current pace, it'll be September 5 when Ripken will break it, but here's the Evans incident. Game one, close play at second base. Actually, this is the first inning. Royals had a great first inning. They scored six times and had a chance to maybe get out of the inning. Looked like the throw had beaten the base runner back to second base. Cal had his glove on top of the bag. Orioles did not get that call. And again, the Royals went on to a, a six-run outburst in the top of the first. Amazing how those things kind of carry over, isn't it? Especially when the weather's hot. Yeah, it just... Second half of the season, you're in a pennant race. That's what baseball needs right now. Heated rivalries, close ball games. Heated in every sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've got him heated in one sense about everywhere at this point of the season in America. Cal Ripken with a 1-2 count. Makes the throw to first. Alexander back. Brady Anderson's the lead runner. On at third base. Alexander can steal. There's Brady Anderson. He'll be looking if 
The runner at first Alexander takes off. He's nine for eleven this season stolen bases. Manny Alexander at first. Not going. Ripken's got a base hit at an RBI. Alexander will hold and Cal Ripken delivers the RBI single to put the Orioles up one nothing. Throughout Cal Ripken's career, he's always been a great situational hitter. You need a ground ball, he'll get you a ground ball. You need a fly ball, he'll do the same thing. Even when he's got two strikes against him, he doesn't give in much to the pitcher. Pretty decent pitch by Apier. It's a pitch down and away, but he stayed with it. Line drive to right field. The Orioles are on the board. He is amazing in the number of key hits that he picks up. That's 25 hits this year that have resulted in an RBI where it either tied the game or put the Orioles ahead. Strike taken on the outside corner, and it looks like Jim Evans has got a fairly wide and high strike zone. There is Ripken, who picks up the RBI for the Orioles. He's got 37 on the year. Continues to pile up the hits, and Apier still with two on and only one out. Harold Baines, the designated hitter, yet another left-handed batter. Now coming into this game, left-handers were hitting 237. Off Kevin Apier. Right handers at 148. So you got a lineup stacked with the Southpaws. Harold Baines, the veteran, is 11 for 32 lifetime against Kevin Apier. He has faced him more than any other Oriole batter. He and Rafael Palmero have seen Apier more than any other of the Oriole players in the lineup tonight. I think if Kevin Apier coming into this ball game were to pick one Oriole that he'd want to stay away from and not give him a chance to beat him, it would probably be Harold Baines. Baines not only hits well against Apier, he hits well against the Royals. Lifetime 294. And Harold Baines has the chance here. Apier, two ball, one strike count, one away. Alexander off first. Ripken off, off first. Alexander at second waits. It falls in. Alexander makes the turn. He'll score. Ripken goes to third, and it's two nothing Orioles. Harold Baines, RBI single. Folks here at Camden Yards are into this one right now with back-to-back -back singles from Ripken and Baines. Baines covers that outside corner very well if you don't come in on his hands with hard stuff early on in the at-bat. Apier didn't get inside. He did not get the strike inside, so Baines was allowed to get to that outside corner and a key base hit. Harold Baines has been red hot, batting 330 now over his last 13 games. And Kevin Apier, the league's number one pitcher when you look at wins and fifth in ERA, is getting a visit from Bruce Keats. It's not unusual to see Kevin Apier get off to a start similar to tonight. Think back to a lot of the great pitchers over the years, and the saying would go, get him earlier, you don't get him at all. Apier is gettable early in the first couple innings. You can get something on the board against him until he gets real loose and starts making better pitches. But if you don't get something on in the first, second, or third innings, he might still be there in the seventh and eighth. Well, the Orioles, a little retaliation for all the runs that have been piled up against them in the last couple of games as they lost the opener in the series 9-8 and then lost again last night 7-2. Kevin Apier is some upset, Paul. He has meetings with himself all the time. And the infielders really enjoy playing around behind him. He'll huff and he'll puff. He makes a lot of noise. He stomps around there, yells at himself. The infielders will tell you it gets pretty noisy, but they love playing behind him because he's so competitive. He throws strikes. He works quickly, and they're ready to play some defense for him. Ripken got a great jump from first. He's at third base now with Leo Gomez up. Runners at first and third. Still only one away. Infield will play for two. Gomez takes it up high for a ball. The two RBIs in this inning as Cal Ripken has picked up one Baines the other Baines on the year now with 32 as the designated hitter 32 runs batted in Leo Gomez would like to help out he's gone two for 18 with runners in scoring position this season he could help himself right here with that fouled off by Ripken first game in the series that Gomez has played and you mentioned he has been struggling but look at his numbers lifetime against Kevin Apier. 409. That's one of the reasons he's in the lineup here tonight and maybe playing for his life on their roster. I mean, they've got to make some roster moves here in the next couple days and they've got Jeff Houston, a utility infielder, has been playing pretty well, swinging the bat well. 
They've also got Jeff Maddow just off the disabled list. So is Leo Gomez expendable? He maybe needs to have a good night here tonight. Good point. I'm sure he recognizes that. Kevin Apier trying to get the ground ball for the double play here off Gomez. Bain's not a fast runner at first and a very small lead over there. He's not going anywhere. That's a, one of the few times I've ever seen a catcher with a towel in his back pocket. Just pulled it out. Brent Maine will catch it for you. Pretty good sized towel he just stuffed back, back into his back pocket during that break. And Apier now has got to wait. Maine says home plate umpire Evans called for the timeout. Leo Gomez, one ball, one strike, one down. The Orioles with two runs in here in the first inning on three hits off Kevin Apier. Baines at first. Close to the bag. Breaking ball misses inside. Two balls and one strike. And right now, an early struggle for Kevin Apier. The opposition hitting just 198 off Kevin Apier coming into this game. The lowest batting average. For a pitcher in the American League, the teams against him. And Apier's having a hard time finding any rhythm here as everybody keeps calling timeout on him. 27 pitches already this inning. 16 for strikes. Two ball, one strike count. Two and two. Kevin Apier's already lost five pounds. Things have changed in sports a little bit. It was in the early 70s. You weren't allowed to drink water during the contest. They'd, no, you'll get cramps. Oh. Well, they've got all kind of the super aids out there. They're drinking between every half inning. That for all the all youngsters. Remember, I remember growing up playing sports. You weren't allowed to drink. It's a wonder there weren't more health problems. Football practices where you couldn't have anything till after it was all done. How about the salt pills? Oh, yeah, you ate <laughs> salt pills. How bad was that for you? <laughs> no wonder we've got heart problems. 3 2 the count, first and third occupied. Apier's pitch runner goes. Baines is dead meat. And he's tagged out a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Somebody may have missed something on that one, but two runs in on three hits. One base runner left on after one. The Orioles have taken a 2 nothing lead off Kevin Akers. Baltimore Orioles playing 500 baseball here in their home Camden Yards this season as they are 17 and 17 have taken the early 2 nothing lead. Gotten some runs for Scott Erickson. And the pitch to Bob Hamlin. This is down low for a ball. Well, here is the American League Rookie of the Season last year. Rookie of the year hitting 191 in his sophomore year has already seen some of the minors but he's had a couple of home runs here at Camden Yards in the two games here and I guess the question Paul is is he back. Worlds are hoping that he's back he's not striking out as much now since his recall as he did early on in the season. It's hard to imagine this Royals ball club being all that successful without some kind of bopper in the middle of the lineup and this guy would appear to have the best chance True power from foul pole to foul pole. Now this is not to make light of the issue but he's not light and he finally admitted that he came back a good deal heavier than he probably should have been at the maybe, start of the season. Maybe huh? the last straw before his being sent back to the minor leagues and he had been working on trying to lose a few pounds. And they have weigh ins on a regular basis on Bob Boone's club and he actually gained four or five pounds before his last weigh in so I think they wanted to make a point with Mr. Hamlin they sent him to Omaha he hit well in AAA and he wasn't down there very long. Hamlin at a 405 foot three run homer on Friday night has had home runs in back to back games. In fact the two for seven that he's had in this series have been the two home runs. And you were telling me about one of the ironies about who he's hitting him off Paul right and left handers. Well they tried to protect him from left handers after he got to, to the slow start this year but he's been caught in a couple positions where he had to face them and did pretty well against him. A year ago Hal McRae the manager of the Royals protected him just played him against righties and he did so well and occasionally he got forced into situations where he had to hit against the lefty he hit well then and fans the call in shows were on Hal McRae about hey run the rookie back out there we want to see more of him by the end of the year he's playing against everybody and hitting him. 
Goes after the outside pitch and ladles that one down the line. I must say, watching him in batting practice today, and I don't get to see much of Bob Hamlin, in stature and swing, I thought I was looking at Rusty Staub. I mean, he has the same built Rusty had towards the end of his career, and he kind of swings the bat the same way that Rusty Staub used to swing the bat. If he hits the way Rusty did, he's got a long career in front of him. Big Orange was a popular guy, wasn't he? That grand orange. <laughs> 2-2 the count. Scott Erickson and Hamlin again fights it off. You know, they are very similar. Both of them all over the plate. Not necessarily dead pole hitters, but did have that zone where they tried to pull the ball. Greg Lazinski, the hitting instructor for the Royals, he knows a lot about the long ball. Most of the comparisons for Bob Hamlin are Babe Ruth. He wears the same number, built about the same way. Got kind of a quick swing. Doesn't have a huge follow-through. Rusty Stobb, you're right. There's another one. And he got it. Good breaking ball thrown by Erickson. Two strikeouts for him as Hamlin goes down on the check swing he couldn't hold up on. One away. Erickson, a sinker slider ball pitcher. And he's very effective when he can keep the ball out of the strike zone. He gets such good movement when it's down around the knees. He has to give in a little bit if he doesn't get ahead in the count. But working ahead of Hamlin, got him to chase that slider. And it was late and it was quick. Other scores, games that are going on, we'll keep you posted on along with highlights. John Saunders in our headquarters studio to keep us up to date on what goes on and all the games that are being played around Major League Baseball, and that's all of them being played on this Saturday night. One away here, 2 0 lead for the Orioles in the second inning, one down, and uh, John Nunnally. He takes the pitch outside, ball two, two balls, no strikes. 23 years old, picked up from Cleveland on a Rule 5 pickup where you get them, and if you keep them, you don't have to send them back, but you've got to keep them playing at the major league level. Paul, he's an interesting story because right now the Royals are mighty happy they claim him. Started out as a backup outfielder. Felix Jose was the right fielder. Michael Tucker, an outstanding young rookie, was the left fielder. Tommy Goodwin, the center fielder. So John Nunley was the guy who was probably the 24th or 25th man on the ball club. Other guys didn't hit. They're both gone. He's now getting a lot of playing time. He's instead putting of up the numbers, huh? Now instead of thinking about possibly having to protect him, they're looking to get him more at bats. He'll be mighty happy about that. They are touting him as a Rookie of the Year candidate. Boy, and that is good news for the Orioles. 90 miles an hour out of Scott Erickson. This has got a chance to give him a little resurgence in his career. Five-year player, and you can divide his career right down the middle. Two and a half years either side. First two and a half, he's 41 and 24, an earned run average of no higher than 3.4. The next two and a half years, he loses two for every one that he wins, an ERA of over five. So 90 miles an hour is a great indication that he's throwing the ball pretty well, as well as he has in the last couple seasons. There you see the numbers right there. May and June, a disaster. July has been spectacular, including his first start against the Chicago White Sox at the new Comiskey Park where he got a win in an Oriole uniform for the first time. That was a great series for the Orioles. They swept the White Sox four straight games. Came back for the All-Star break, and they were really thinking first place over here in the Eastern Division. Off to a slow start here in the second half. 3-2 misses down low, and Erickson has given up his first walk. John Nunley makes his way down to first base with one away here in the second inning. He has walked 35 now in uh, 95 innings this season. Edgar Caceres stands in. A switch hitting second baseman 0 for 2 in the series. A rookie but 31 years old. So doesn't officially qualify. 10 years in the minors for him. Chops that one back to the mound. Looked to second base and threw it away. Alexander stops it because it came right to him. He wasn't covering the bag. Ripken was moving over to take the throw, and Erickson missed by a country mile, and it looks like he thought Alexander was going to be there to cover. On this fielding play, the pitcher off the mound, you've got the play to second base behind you. As you wheel and fire, you need to pick up the bag. It's the middle infielder's responsibility to get to that bag. If you pick up the bag, one of the middle guys should be arriving. Instead, Erickson picked up his second baseman and threw it right to him. Wrong guy. It'll be a fielder's choice on an error. And suddenly, Kansas City's got runners on at first and second. 
with one out they are trailing two nothing. And here is David Howard. Now, as soon as we get done talking about how good these two teams are defensively. <laughs> well the Orioles have had streaks of three consecutive years where they make less than 100 errors and that's great team defense. And you figure they're going to make less than 100 errors again this year with the shortened season. Royals probably going to be in that same situation. Baltimore's made three errors here last night but it led to only one unearned run so they didn't get hurt as much as they could have. That equal to season high in errors in a ball game for Phil Reagan's team with the three errors in last night's contest. Howard fouls that one down the left field line foul ball. David Howard you saw the numbers on him batting at just 176 on the season. He has had a couple of hits in this series the first two games going two for seven. Batting 139 right handed 204 left handed. And Howard towards third. Nice play made Gomez. They've got one. The turn by Alexander. They get two. Big double play to help Erickson. So one left on, but nothing across. The Orioles protect the 2 0 lead. For the second inning with Baltimore leading KC 2 0. And remind you tomorrow, 1 30 Eastern, 1230 Central and Pacific on ABC Sports. Series point leaders Jacques Villeneuve and the IndyCar Circuit's best drivers will roll into Canada for the most at Indy Toronto. Then the stars of the Senior PGA Tour shoot it out. Final round of the Ford Senior Players Championship all tomorrow right here on ABC Sports. Vince Coleman is back in the dugout but out of the starting lineup. Bruce Rib is what we heard. He had been penciled in to be leading it off. And was taken out late after batting practice for the Royals. Jeffrey Hammonds leading it off here for Baltimore. Bottom third of the order coming up against Kevin Apier, who will try and settle in after two runs on three hits off him in that first inning. Hammonds has had his average drop down a bit of late. Down to third. That'll be a base hit off Lockhart, who had moved in. Not only coming in to get it, big turn by Hammonds, but he'll go back to the bag. A shot the third base. Cam is coming back from serious knee surgery in that offseason. Doesn't look as sharp right now as he did when he first came up. He's a dead fastball hitter looking to pull everything when he first got to the big leagues. Slowed a little bit right now. You got to believe he's playing less than 100 percent but trying to play his way through it. Not in right field on an everyday basis right now. Only had four hits in his last 33 at bats. 38 at bats actually and delivers a single here. Chris Hoyles. Starting catcher for the Orioles. And Apier, the leadoff man on again, as the Orioles did in the first inning. Oh, Apier has now been touched up for four hits by Baltimore. Orioles coming into this game, team average. It's up there among the top group of clubs. They've been able to score some runs, but had trouble finding a, the pitching to be able to hold together. Sid Fernandez, of course, they had acquired, hoping he was going to make a huge difference for this team, and it didn't work out that way. He is gone. Lee May, their hitting coach, a lot of extra time with a lot of these Orioles in the cage underneath. Try and help the staff out. Diving back in is Hammonds. Baltimore ninth in the league with a 267 team batting average. Pretty good lead at first base. Towards the gap, right center field, long run, high at back, back off the base of the wall. Big jump for Hammonds. He'll come around. Crow coming into the plate. Can't get him. Hammonds scores. And the base runner. Hoyles gets a single because he hurt himself going down to first base. An RBI single to give the Orioles a 3-0 lead, but one of the longest singles you'll ever see. 
Chris Hoyles is a guy who always swings the bat well against the Royals ball club. Launches one to right center field. Phil Hyatt, the right fielder, third baseman when he first came to the big leagues. He's got a great arm. That's the reason the Royals were able to get this thing back in in a hurry and make it close at home plate. Take another look at the play and look at Hoyles pulling up as he rounded first base. First lineup I saw here today, he was not the scheduled catcher. Greg Zahn was in the original lineup. That change was made late. We may still see Zahn. He's in there now as a pinch runner. <laughs> Doug Cotter checking the lineup card. There is Zahn, a pinch runner now for Hoyles. Credit Hoyles with a single. And the RBI, his 29th run batted into the season, putting the Orioles up 3 nothing. He just missed a home run in that gap at about the 380 mark. Here is Curtis Goodwin batting in the number nine spot. How'd you like to have that average and be hitting ninth? A speedster. Left handed hitter, eighth in the league in stolen bases. Tries to drag one to first. Dar is too hard, though. Joyner will put the tag on him. They will give him credit for a sacrifice there, though. Don goes down to second. When you've got that good speed, anytime you can get that bunt down and maybe get it by that pitcher, you've got a chance for a base hit. That wasn't straight sacrifice. He tried to hide his intentions as long as he could. He sets the table for Brady Anderson. As Goodwin credited with a sacrifice, gives Anderson the RBI opportunity where Goodwin is fifth sacrifice of the season, leading Baltimore in that department. And here's Brady Anderson who will try and pick up the RBI. Anderson scored after he let off the first inning with a double. Now put it another role as a leadoff hitter. An RBI chance. He has 33 runs batted in on the season. Already a 3 0 lead here for the Orioles with another run in on the second off Kevin Aitken. That one drills in the gap right center field. Hyatt going back. Will not have a chance at this. One hops off the top of the wall. Making the turn, coming in to score. Run number four is on. And another double, this time an RBI for Anderson. to his first time up here tonight the fact that he's turned his career around the last three years with his ability to pull the ball and drive it extra base power and home run power for Brady Anderson a double into the right field corner and this one dead into the right center field gap 15 doubles on the season including the two tonight and the Orioles are literally shooting the gaps and Zahn who came on to run for Hoyles had no trouble scoring the fourth run Kevin Apier really getting touched up here by the Orioles. Six hits already. Manny Alexander hit by a pitch his first time up. That one to left center, not deep. Not only moving over the left fielder, will put it away. And Anderson will stay at second base. And there are two down here in the second. I think Brady's just resting. He's not. Left-hander is Mike McNanty in the Royals bullpen just up from Omaha the last two weeks. A guy that was a starter in AAA and has been used both in the bullpen and starting rotation at the major league level. Probably more suited to long relief in the major leagues, not overpowering with any of his pitches. Apier started on the seventh against Detroit and won eight innings, giving up just three runs and three hits in that game. But Baltimore has really unloaded on him early in this one. This ball game against the Tigers was a, a great performance. That was a matchup of all-star pitchers. David Wells went for the Tigers. He's really gotten things going for that ball club and one of the leaders on their staff. Made the all-star appearance down in Arlington last week, and Wells got the best of that outing. The previous outing for Kevin Apier was the worst of the season. He was left in for six-plus innings through well over 110 pitches. Allowed 10 earned runs against the Red Sox. They swung the bats well in that series. Rafael Palmero, two down and a 1 1 count on him. Palmero flied out his first time up, fouls that one off. One ball, two strikes. 
Del Mero, 308 with runners in scoring position, and he has Brady Anderson on at second base with two down. He's got a chance to have huge numbers here in this ballpark. A guy who's not as big and as strong as a number of the first basemen in the league, but a fluid swing. You mentioned Wally Joyner with the sweet swing. Rafael Palmero, very similar. And he's got the power to get it out here in right field as well as left center field. Good long left center, that, right center hitter. Yeah, along with that average, good. you're right, good power for him, too. Palmero takes the pitch up high by Apia. Evens the count up, two balls and two strikes. Play Rafael Palmero to pull. Center fielder Goodwin's moved over a bit to right. He loves that gap. Take a look at the right fielder. Hyatt is turned facing the line in right field. He thinks he's going to pull. Palmero unable to catch up with the off speed delivery. Apier gets the strikeout, but the Orioles get two more runs on three hits. Apier has been touched up now for four runs on six hits for the game. Fouls that one off here at Camden Yards as the Orioles have jumped out to a 4 nothing lead over the Kansas City Royals. It'll be Maine, Hyatt, and then the top of the order do up here. You see Baltimore jumping on Kevin Apier just when you think you know it. Apier, opposition hitting 198 against him. Four runs on six hits. Erickson, opposition hitting 292 against him. Hasn't given up the hit yet, but a long way to go. Scott Erickson in his second start with this Orioles ball club. They're trying to make him feel right at home. He had a comfortable lead against the White Sox his first time out. Same story here tonight. Redmayne waiting on it. And the 1-1 delivery by Erickson is taken for a strike. Lots of other baseball going on. Let's bring you up to date. John Saunders has got the stories. John. All right, Gary, and we will keep an eye on your game as we show you these highlights. First of all, the White Sox and the Brewers. Scott Carl on the mound facing Frank Thomas. Ken Harrelson picks up the call. That ball here way back. High and deep in the center field. As Hamilton looks up, you can put it on the board. Yep. For Frank Thomas, his 23rd home run of the year, and the White Sox lead the Brewers 2-0 in the fourth inning. Elsewhere, Texas and Boston, and Rusty Greer is having quite a night. In the first inning, a single just sneaks through. McLemore comes around to score, making it a 2-0 game. Then in the third, this shot fielded down at third. The throw down to first and the routine ground out. But we can tell you right now that the score is 3-0, and Rusty Greer has driven in a pair of runs in this game. The Reds and the Cubs. Pete Shurek, the pitcher on the mound. Routine once again to Sean Dunstan, but it doesn't come up. And the error allows Boone to come in to score as Cincinnati takes a 1-0 lead on the Cubs. And Larry Walker has had quite a year. Unbelievable. This guy didn't make the all-star team. 53 runs batted in now as this double brings in Kingery and Bichette as the Rockies take the lead over top of the New York Mets. 4-1 is the score. Back to Gary and Paul. Gentlemen. John, thanks very much, and welcome back here. As you saw, Maine ground out 5-3. Now Hyatt getting his first at-bat. We are delighted to have you with us. Gary Thorne, Paul Splithorff here at Camden Yards, part of our premier broadcast of Baseball Night in America on the Baseball Network. Good to see what's going on around the rest of the major leagues. Both those Chicago ball clubs are involved in big series of their own. The White Sox are in the middle of the division here in the Central Division with the Royals, and they're going to be a factor in this race. They're trying to catch the Brewers. And having a tough time doing it. The Cubs over on the other side. This is a crucial series with the Cincinnati Reds. They're going to see a lot of each other over the next two weeks. And the Cubs have lost the first two games of that series. The Cubs playing at home probably need to make a move right now. Yep. Not time to be falling behind any further in any of these races. Hyatt goes through on that one. And Scott Erickson has his third strikeout. And there are two down here in the third inning. Slider's been very effective for him tonight. He's pitching with his fastball. He gets ahead in the count. And there comes that slider. He's been effective when he's gotten it out of the strike zone, but he shows you strike with it. He's got that late quick movement on it, and he's got guys chasing things out of the zone. Boy, what a help he could be to this Baltimore staff if, in fact, he can pitch the way he's pitching right now. Keith Lockhart grounded out his first time up. Lockhart to center field, not deep. Good one started back. Now will drift in. Meanders and makes the catch and a good inning. Scott Erickson retires the side in order. He's cruising along against KC right now. Cal's coming up. O's are up 4 nothing. And every time, Cal Ripken moving in. The O's leading at bottom of the third inning. And uh, Ripken, part of the offense already. An RBI single came in the first. 
50 games shy of Lou Gehrig's record before the game. Had a chance to talk with him and asked him whether or not he wished Lou Gehrig were still alive so he could talk to him. It would be interesting to relate to the, uh, uh, I don't want to say the struggle, but uh, relate to the, uh, the fact that you have to play day in and day out. You know, I'm, I'm curious to see what it was like uh, um, in his time with the, with the way the travel was and, you know, maybe the travel was easier now. Uh, it would be interesting to talk to someone that has that has gone through uh, something like this. Be a conversation worth sitting in on if it could happen, wouldn't it? Ripken fouls that one up. Maybe with all the computers that we've got going today, they've got with all the games you can play. Yeah, you could have that conversation. What would Lou say? I'll tell you, I think Cal's got a tremendous respect for this game and the people that have gone ahead of him, and he's very aware of what these numbers mean, how much work it is, and he touched on it a little bit there. He said, "I'm not saying the struggles." But you know it hasn't been easy. And you know Lou Gehrig would say to him, take it because of who Cal Ripken is. Gehrig's record's going to be broken. It should be by a Cal Ripken who genuinely loves this game and cares about playing in it and works at protecting the game. See during the streak, 27 major league clubs. Oh my lord. Foul love. We'll put that up again for you. There is an endless list of interesting tales to go along with it. You see this? 99.2% of the innings he has played during the streak. Yeah, he does not leave. He's out there for the duration. He wants all of his advance. When his dad was managing this ball club and I started my broadcasting career, I asked him, I said, now, what about your ball club? You've got to be concerned about your club and he, this guy's got to wear down from time to time. And he just answered me and he said, hey, wait a minute, I got a chance to come in here and write Cal down at shortstop, number four in my batting order every day and I know my ball club looks better with him out there than it does with him sitting over here next to me. 13 years worth of not missing a game. That is a list of the others who are closest and I use that term relatively to him. There isn't anybody close. We were talking about it before the start of tonight's game. He's got 50 games left yeah. to reach this record. And of the two teams here on this field right now, how many of these guys do you think will play in the next 50 ball games? We decided maybe a couple. Wally Joyner's got a chance for the Royals. Tommy Goodwin, the center fielder, possibly. They don't platoon him at all. That's oh. just for 50 games. I know. And Rafael Palmero for the Orioles. He's a fixture in their lineup. He's a guy that you'd, you'd center things around. Brady Anderson would be another. Those are your only shots. That's it. We're not talking 13 years. We're talking 50 games. You may have four guys on the field right now who will play those 50. While Cal has gone 13 years of playing all of those games. If it works out at the current rate, it would be September 6th that he would break it. They're playing the Angels here on a Wednesday. Two-two delivery. Another one of the numbers that we had up there was the 29 different second basemen that he has played. How many of those second basemen were converted shortstops? Guys that came up through their system as shortstops, saw there was no future, they moved him to second base. Like Manny Alexander, the guy there now. Yep. You had no future at short in the Orioles organization over the last 13 years. Even as a backup guy. <laughs> <laughs> An occasional fill-in. Good luck. Line drive off the glove of Wally Joyner and Cal Ripken is two for two. One of the things he's done well since coming to the big leagues is stay on top of the ball. He can drive the ball the opposite way. He carries his hands high at the plate. Short, quick swing, stays on top of the ball. That's why he's able to drive it the opposite way. Low line drive. About tears the glove off the first baseman, Joyner. Second base hit. He's gotten to the right side of the infield already tonight. That will time for ninth for the moment, at least, in hits in the league with J.T. Snow. Now Harold Baines and Apia continues to struggle to find ways to get the Orioles out. Baines contributed an RBI single in the first inning. And then he got caught stealing on what looked like some missed signs. He wasn't even close to the bag. That one drilled down the line and right high. It did not have a chance to get it. Making the turn, going over to third base, Ripken. He's going to be held there. And down to second base goes Baines. He's got a double. I thought Hyatt had a chance to catch that ball. 
Harold Baines is two for two. Riles had their outfield bunched against Baines. They want to try to take away the right center field alley. Hyatt, not the speediest of outfielders. Pretty solid defensively for a new position. This ball just barely eluded him, but I think it was more Baines hitting it ball by the right fielder. He powered that one off the base of the scoreboard. I was surprised he didn't reach up at the last second just with the glove, but felt it was far enough away from him, and then he got caught closer to the wall, and Kevin Apier's done. Who would have believed this? The number one winner in the American League with 11 and 5 for a mark has been knocked out of the box by the Orioles in two plus innings. Apier with his shortest outing of the year, two plus innings. Three starts ago, he went three and two thirds innings against the Red Sox, gave up 10 earned runs. So Kevin Apier, who's looking to break a three game losing streak with a strong effort here tonight, is going to have to wait at least one more start. Not what Kansas City or Kevin Apier had in mind for this ball game. We will see the left-hander coming out of the bullpen. Mike Magnanti, tell us about him, Paul. Mike Magnanti is a finesse lefty all the way. Fastball straight changeup. The straight changeup is going to look like a screwball. It's actually about as close to a straight screwball as I've seen anybody at the big league level have since, say, Mike Cuellar of these Baltimore Orioles. Starting to work in a breaking ball. Slurve type breaking ball. He's not going to overpower anybody here tonight. He'll need to change speed to keep the ball out of the middle of the plate. Try to get some ground balls. Leo Gomez gets first crack at him with two in scoring position and nobody out here in the third inning. The infield playing it halfway for KC. They'll try at the plate. The ball's hit hard enough. Take it inside. Maine makes the stop on it. Orioles with a chance to put a huge hole in this ball game. You mentioned earlier the Royals easily the lowest scoring team in the American League. They're not the type of club that can normally come back from a six run deficit. And forced to play their infield halfway, try to cut down that lead run, ripping on over at third base. Baines is on at second. Magnanti misses with that one, two balls and no strikes. Third inning, and the Baltimore Orioles have jumped out to a 4 nothing lead, four runs on eight hits. And, of course, the starter, Kevin Apey, is responsible for the base runners. The two of them were on now. He didn't walk anybody and struck out two. Magnanti infield creeps in a little more. Not on this one. Center field. Good one. Backing up. Backing up. Tom Goodwin can't get it. Off the top of the wall. Goodbye. Home run. A three-run homer. His first home run of the year for Leo Gomez. Well, we talk about this ballpark being cozy. This portion of the yard, it's not cozy. It's 410 feet to just left to where this ball hit on top of the wall. Belt high out over the plate. We talked about Magnanti having to keep the ball down to be effective. Didn't keep that one down. And just enough distance for Gomez. So two of those runs will be charged to Kevin Apier. So six runs charged to him and one. Goes against Magnanti, who gives up the home run to Leo Gomez, a three-run homer. First home run of the season for Gomez, RBIs six, seven, and eight. And man, as Paul said, he tagged that baseball to short. Howard up with it. Over to Joyner, who makes the pick. And Jeff Hammonds is retired, first out of the third. Other scores going on in baseball that we'll keep you abreast of, including highlights as we roll along in our ball game from Camden Yards. Leo Gomez, his last home run was July 30 of last year. And he's got him humming here at Camden Yards. Seven nothing lead. So the catchers, no matter who they are, keep on delivering. Greg Zahn, who came on for Hoyles after Hoyles singled in the second, and pulled up with a muscle pull, gets his first at bat, and he picks up a single. Bob Boone getting his first look at Greg Zahn, the young catcher. Of course, Bob Boone caught better than 2,200 games. 
Just one less than Carlton Fisk, who has the record. Greg Zahn is the nephew of former Oriole Rick Dempsey. Looks a lot like him, wears the same number. Stroke looks the same. They say his mannerisms are the same as well. Breaking ball taken for a strike by Curtis Goodwin, the number nine hitter. See his numbers against left-handers and right. Magnati, the left-hander out there now, had a sacrifice his first time up. Good stop made by Maine. Magnati down and away with it. One ball, one strike. Well, the Baltimore Orioles showing some power here at home, putting that one away. Baltimore ranked 10th in the league as a team in home runs. That was their 83rd homer. They now have hit as many as their staff has given up. Magnani again goes to the breaking ball away, misses two and one. Orioles don't figure to get many home runs out of Curtis Goodwin, the rookie, but they do figure they're going to get solid defensive play in center field. You might remember Andy Van Slyke was their center fielder on opening day. He was a late sign in spring training. They had talked all winter long, and they were fiddling over what the final numbers were going to be. Van Slyke was on and off the disabled list a couple times. And then they used Brady Anderson in center field. They had Damon Buford at the time. They were both in and out of the lineup, but looks like this guy's going to be here for some time to come. You sure can chase him down. He's 26 years old. Told you earlier, eighth in stolen bases in the league. And sacrifice runners. Magnati here with a look over at first base on Zahn, who's not going to go anywhere, but it's developed a pretty good lead over there with a 2 2 count. Slaps that one. Nice stop made. Lockhart's going to hurry to first, not in time. Infield single. The Orioles can do no wrong right now. Down to second base goes Zahn. And there are two on again. Give Curtis Goodwin the infield hit. Speed forces that infield to play in shallow on the opposite side. Just tight enough to allow Goodwin to get the ball off the third baseman's glove. That's Keith Lockhart. Close at first base, but not in time. And now Red Hot Brady Anderson will stand in with runners at first and second and one away. Anderson has already delivered two doubles, has scored a run, and has an RBI. And it's only his third time up. Batting 270 on the season now with the two hits he's had tonight and continues to pile up some multiple hit games. Drills that one down to first by Wally Joyner. Zahn will score. Picked up by Hyatt. Throw coming to the plate. They'll have to hold the runner up who fell coming around third. Curtis Goodwin. Three can <laughs> Anderson and his second RBI of the game. He doesn't base by the Orioles already here tonight. Five of those for extra bases. As you mentioned, Gary, is third double of the night for Brady Anderson. Two of them into the right field, two of them in the alley in right center field. And the Orioles are having a good time on the bases. Good one would have tripped to the plate, but you saw him trip right there. Sent him back to the bag. Well, the Orioles. They've got it all on right now. Eight runs on 12 hits. And we're only in the bottom of the third inning. Manny Alexander hit by a pitch and is flied out. One down. Two in scoring position. Infield is drawn in. Magnanti misses inside. Ball one. Brady Anderson now with 35 runs batted in, having two tonight. Brady Anderson now has had four consecutive multiple hit games. 20 two multiple hit games on the year inside again by the left hander two balls and no strikes it had been the Royals in the first two games who were doing all the scoring especially last night seven to two Manny Alexander waiting 2 0 delivery to him fastball foul back two and one. One of the reasons the Orioles feel they have a chance to win their division is because of the quality people they have for young players. Alexander, the second baseman, hard-working kid, loves to play the game, knows what it's all about. Curtis Goodwin in center field, we already talked about him. They feel like he's going to be a star of the future. They are not only good players, talented young players, but they're good people with good work ethic. 
Manny Alexander evens it up. I mentioned at the top, Paul, that many people believe that American League East is really up for grabs. Part of that is because there are so many Red Sox fans who know they're being set up for another fall. <laughs> but, and Detroit is playing surprisingly well. I mean, when you look at that staff they have, it, you kind of wonder how they're getting it done. Well, you also look at the middle part of their lineup. They've got Travis Fryman in the middle along with Cecil Fielder. You stay away from those two guys, and you feel you got a great chance against their ball club. But they're doing it pretty well from top to bottom, and their bullpen is starting to come together for them. They've got some new names on their staff, but starting to do a better job in the pitching department than anybody had anticipated. But again, they are the surprise. I don't think anybody feels they're going to be there once you get into the month of September. So that's why the Orioles feel they've got a legitimate shot at catching those two teams that are ahead of them right now. Manny Alexander waiting on the delivery. Magnani gets it. Strikes out. First strikeout for Magnati. Down goes Manny Alexander. Mentioned Magnati's changeup, the screwball. Probably his best pitch. And that is it, and it is a dandy. Well, early in the game, it's a big out to get right here in Rafael Palmero. Granted, it is 8 nothing, but it's only in the third. But there are two more out there in scoring position for Rafael Palmero. He's done pretty well against this particular left-hander. Two on, two down. Still working out of the stretch. Magnetti's pitch. Palmero goes to first on the ground. Wally Joyner will take it to the bag, and he does get the big out. But the Baltimore Orioles and a three-run homer by Leo Gomez add four more in the inning to make it eight nothing. Those leading the Royals will pause for ABC stations to identify themselves. More 8, 12, and 1. And zeros up there. Scott Erickson working here in the fourth inning. Tom Goodwin, who's grounded out, leads it off. Joyner and Hamlin to uh, follow. In at third base. Gomez just in case. Taken down low for a ball. Monday at ABC Sports. Both of these teams will be showcased. Baseball Night in America back Monday. Many of you see these Royals taking on the Red Sox at Fenway. Other areas. Cal Ripken continues his streak. The Orioles head to Texas play the Rangers. Ballpark in Arlington. Other regional action. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Monday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central here on ABC. Strike call from Erickson. Two balls and one strike. Tom Goodwin. Four hits in his last 11 at-bats. 0 for 4 against Erickson in the only times he's faced it. 2 and 2. He loves wearing an Oriole uniform. <laughs> Probably feels like there's air conditioning out there right now, right. too. <laughs> Pitch 2. <laughs> Can we divide this number by 2? And I'll just call it 2 W's. Erickson working here with a 3-2 delivery and fouled off by Tom Goodwin. 26 stolen bases leads the National League, actually 28, followed by Vince Coleman with 22. They've got some speed. 3-2 delivery again, and he walked him. Second walk given up by Erickson. This is a leadoff walk. It's exactly what the Orioles need to stay away from. Most of the time that you see the big innings and teams coming from way back, the pitcher's going to deal out some walks. They're going to throw some wrong bases, allow people to move up. The defense is going to kick it. Right now, the Orioles need strikes. They need ground balls. Keep this ball game moving along, and don't let the Royals, for one minute, think they can get back in it. Yep. See Wally join his numbers. Lifetime against Erickson. Ground ball to short. Just what they needed. Ripken, Alexander, Palmero, two down. Baseball Night in America is brought to you by Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Aaron. Get a little closer. And MCI, the company that brings you proof positive. Gary Thorne and Paul Splodorf with you. All of our crew delighted to have you with us here at Camden Yards. Officially 101 at game time in Baltimore. 
The Baltimore Orioles haven't let it affect them. Jumping out of the Royals 8 0. Foul back by Hamlin. And Erickson with a double play ball as two down here. No, Gary, you think back to these two ball clubs when they were in their heydays, the Orioles in the mid 70s and on into the early 80s, the Royals in the late 70s. They made their pennant races from late July on through August when their weather got hot. Good teams usually start to play their best ball then, and that's when these clubs were red hot, nobody could stay with it. And Erickson, another good inning as Gomez gets the ground ball out. He's getting the ground balls. That's when he's on. He is on for the single and ultimately scored. He is two for two. And I, I wanted to ask him this question before the game, and so I did. When you get to the record date, would you think about not playing and just tying Lou Gehrig and staying there with him? <laughs> no. Um, uh, a lot of people have had theories like that. Uh, uh, I've heard that before, but, uh, you know, to me, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. I haven't set out to do this. I'm still not trying to do this. Uh, if I would pull some kind of stunt like that or if I would go to the last day and then do it for whatever reason I might have, it would contradict any kind of... Uh, statement I've made before or, or would, would uh, compromise my approach all these years you know in, in uh, the best case scenario if it happens when it happens whatever um, that day should be the same as the day before and the day after that should be the same as the day before and uh, if I'm able to uh, to do it and I'm able to be stay cons consistent with my approach that that'll make me happy Cal Ripken continues to downplay this thing if that's possible this is just another day at the ballpark for him and figure he's going to be out there again tomorrow afternoon. I certainly give him credit for approaching it that way. It's probably the only way to maintain your sanity in this is he just is playing. It's just as natural for him to play tomorrow as it was today as it was 13 years ago. And while it's a big deal to all of us who watch him it's not that big a deal to him. He would sacrifice it all if his club could come back, have a great second half. They could go on and win the Eastern Division Championship and get into postseason play for the first time since 1983. That's a better trade-off for him. Yep. Wants to be the winner. A lot of changes made for the Kansas City Royals here. As they have moved some folks around and taken some people out. Trailing by a score of 8 nothing. We'll show it to you in a minute. Cal Ripken. Waiting here, the 2-2 delivery to him. Line drive towards center. Nunley moving over, won't get it. Ripken read the script. <laughs> he is three for three in this ball game. Leads off another inning with a single. Here are the changes for the Kansas City Royals. Chris James has come in the ball game to play in left field. John Nunley moves over to center from right from left. Steins comes in the game to play at second base. Joyner has come out of the ball game. Casaris has moved over from second to first. So those are the changes so far. Scorebook starting to look a lot like spring training. No, actually, it looked that way when we started this <laughs> game. <laughs> Here's Harold Baines. <laughs> Line drive. Baines is red hot. He picks up his third consecutive hit. Throw is cut off as Ripken goes to third. They're not old. They're not tired. They just needed some warm weather. They are getting some pitches to handle here tonight. That's a ball middle, middle of the plate, and they're doing some first ball hitting. Go to the plate, look for something you can handle there, getting those types of pitches, and making the most of their opportunities here tonight. Magnati no greater success than Kevin Apier. Apier worked two plus six runs eight hits walk none struck out two. Baines had a couple off him now he's got one off Magnati. A 30 year old left hander came on and gave up the three run homer to the first man he faced Leo Gomez. He's given up what, six hits here one two three four five six. And we'll get a chance to stop it right there. Against Leo Gomez. Earl Reagan can afford to sit back in the dugout right now. His club leading 8 0, 14 hits. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Nobody out, runners at first and third, and Gomez, what his first home run against Magnati, his last at bat. Now Gomez. Had come into this game 
two for his last 18 with runners in scoring position. He was two for 19 in that situation when he hit that home run. First one since July 30th last year. That's when you know it's all going right for you as a team. And Natty's pitch to him reaches and fouls it back. Strike two. Other scores in all of the Major League Baseball action that is taking place tonight. And there is rain around. The Orioles trying to gain some ground on the Red Sox, who are losing in their ballgame. Kansas City, they find themselves 12 and a half games out with Red Hot Cleveland in front. 0 2 delivery. Some question about who the Royal starter will be here for the final game of the series tomorrow afternoon. You talk about Red Hot Cleveland. Chad OJ just called back to the big leagues. He was sent back to the minor leagues. During the All Star break, he had a 5 1 record. His earned run average was just over two points. That staff looks like it's pretty well loaded right now with Earl Hershiser back off the disabled list. But Black was released a couple days ago. There was some talk he might be here for Sunday. Nice play by Chris James. Ripken tags and scores. Throw comes back all the way to first. Baines is back in the bag. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Gomez, who now has a four RBI game and nine on the season. He's one shy of the total RBIs he had on the year in this game. Again, the Orioles getting tremendous pitches to handle. Again, that ball inner half of the plate, mid-thigh high. Nice diving catch by James, who's playing his first ball of the year in the outfield. He was on the disabled list a good part of this year out with a bad left shoulder. Has been used some in the DH role here recently. First time he has worn the glove this year. Jeffrey Hammonds, Baines on at first base, one away. One for two for Hammonds. So the pitching for Kansas City, what's going to happen to it as far as the starters are concerned? Now they've got a problem with Chris Haney on the disabled list out with a bad lower back. They feel he's going to be out for at least six weeks. They signed Dave Fleming within the last week in a trade from the Seattle Mariners for another minor leaguer. Drive for two. Howard, the relay to Joyner, is in time. Jeffries hits into the double play. And Magnetti gets out of it, but a run on a couple of hits. Nobody left on in the fourth, and the Orioles now have extended their lead to 9-0. Struck two and struck out three. Making his first appearance here at Camden Yards and his second start for the Baltimore Orioles. Trying to even his mark up. He's five and six with a 577 earned run average for this right hander. Takes that one. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without written consent from the Office of the Commissioner. Gary Thorne and Paul Splitto up here in Baltimore. In our premier evening, Baseball Night in America, ABC and the Baseball Network. Averaging some 41,543 here at Camden Yards this season, and a couple hundred seats were available today. The bleachers, they're gone. Despite the hot weather, it's full. Base hit. So John Nunnally gets one just out of the reach. Alexander at second base and a leadoff single for Nunnally in the first hit of Scott Erickson. Nice ovation from the fans here for Scott Erickson. He goes four innings of no hit baseball. Then they base hit to right field. So the Royals have a hit on the board against him. He needs to make sure he keeps everything in order here. Continue to throw that good stuff down around the knees. Let the movement take over. Try to keep this ball in the infield if he can. Hey, it's good to see some good crowds around baseball, Gary. I know you cover over in the National League, and I think we're seeing some big-time disparity now. Clubs are in the race. They've got the new ballparks. We're seeing it in Colorado, certainly here, where they're averaging about 43,000 per game over the last three weeks. Seeing big crowds starting to pop up around baseball, but still a number of cities. They're hovering around 15, 18, 19,000. Kansas City's one of those towns. And it makes that disparity that has been the problem all along here between the have and the have not clubs even more disparate. Line drive base hit. Ripken uh, short was back deep and was actually closer to it than the third baseman Gomez who moved in. So back to back singles. Casaras on with a single. Nolly John uh, Nolly goes down to second base. 
Browns have been down big time in the scores earlier this year, but this club continues to scrap. Bob Boone, while he is a quiet man, was always a quiet player, has always been a very intense man, and he demands that of his players. These guys will continue to come to the plate and get their swings. They may not be all that successful against Erickson if he continues to throw as well as he has through the first four innings, but these guys aren't going to back off any either. Hadn't given up a hit to this setting. Now there are two on with nobody out. And David Howard. It's the RBI chance here. The Baltimore infield will play for two. Not only on at second base. Grounded towards first. Chance here. Nope, just one. Almero on the slowly hit ground ball wanted to make sure so he just went to the bag and the runners will move up to second and third with one away Howard retired. So it'll be Brent Maine who grounded out his first time up with two in scoring position. Nine nothing Baltimore on top KC here in the fifth inning trying to start chipping away at it. It's been a struggle for Maine, as you see, at the plate. Those numbers. Maine is 14 RBIs. And won't get one here? No, he will. He'll only get the one at first base. So Stein makes a play over, and that's going to uh, take the runner in from third base. John Nunnally scores over to third. Caceres. And credit Maine with the RBI to make it 9 to 1. But it's a ground ball out and there are two down. So the Orioles really just playing this inning trying not to have any big inning happen. Here's Phil Hyatt. Runner at third base. Two away. Hyatt who struck out swinging his first time up. Erickson. Last ball inside to him. Saw Hyatt's numbers versus righties versus lefties. He has not seen a lot of right-handed pitching so far this year. They are using him as a backup outfielder so he's getting some platoon action mostly in right field with John Nunley Nunley the left handed hitting portion of that platoon system Hyatt they'd like to get him more playing time the second half of the year the guy who came up to the big leagues as a third baseman the Royals acquired Gary Gaetti they went back to the minor leagues he worked on his play as a right fielder pretty decent outfielder they like him for his home run potential that one right off the fist Ripken backing up will put it away so Hyatt retired but Erickson touched up for a couple of hits and a run and one left on as the Royals get on the board. Orioles still up 9-1. Losing streak they are in. And right now on top of KC, 9-1. Mike Magnatti stays on. The left-hander delivers to Greg Zahn, who came on for Hoyles. He pulled a muscle in the leg on a base hit. Zahn got a single and scored his first at bat. Magnatti pulls a string on it. 101. That may necessitate a roster move here tomorrow. It looked like Hoyles was pretty well damaged with the left hamstring. They have just two catchers on their roster, and it's always an anxious situation for a manager when you come in with just one guy that can do the work behind the plate. How's Boots Barbecue doing out there? Is he doing some business? By the smoke coming up out of there, I'd say yes. It's more than just in a ball game here at Camden Yards. They're on Utah Street. They've got the novelty stands, the collectible stores. Also got a nice feature with plates in the sidewalk out there measuring the long home runs juniors out there a couple times still waiting for someone to hit the warehouse during the course of a regular ball game down that right field line a big huge beautiful warehouse out there converted into Baltimore Oriole office space fouled off and Griffey Jr. did hit it in the home run hitting contest before the 93 all-star game Mickey Tettleton's noted out there he's got one for about 430 feet got a surprise Lee Stevens with California yeah he's got maybe the longest about 440 feet in game situations a very tough play here if it stays fair it didn't Lockhart waited until it rolled foul well, that one would have been a base hit so Greg Zahn will come back as he leads off this bottom half of the fifth inning for the O's been some swinging bunts in this series so far. You see that grass very close to the foul line, both third and first baseline. You can keep it into the grass. You'll always be able to keep the ball fair. Sinker ball pitchers have worked throughout this series. Slow roller has been a big factor. Zahn, who had been playing at Triple A ball, Rochester, and called up 
And you see he's hit safely in six of the nine major league games he has played in since his major league debut on June 24. Magnetti's delivery to him. Just missed the outside corner with that. Counts full. Three balls and two strikes. Well, certainly everything they have done here at Camden Yards is being copied in the new ballparks. And he's on as he draws the walk. First given up by Magnatti, and the leadoff man is on again for Baltimore here in the fifth inning. Other games going on. The man who's keeping us posted on all of those, John Saunders. All right, Gary, we're going to take you around the majors as we stay there at Camden Yards. The Twins and the Yankees, Pedro Munoz, Looked like it went off the end of the bat, but blasted out to right field. Is it fair? The Yankees don't think so. The umpires say, yes, it's a home run. They give it to them. Five to four now in the fifth inning. White Sox and the Brewers. The White Sox has jumped out 3-1 in this game. Daryl Hamilton knocks this one just inside the bag. It's a double. It scores two and ties this game at three apiece. That's where they stand now in the sixth inning. The Braves and the Padres. And the Padres all over Atlanta until Charlie O'Brien blasts this one with one run aboard and it's now a 5-2 game. They've added another one have the Padres to make it 6-2 now in the sixth inning. Reds and the Cubs Brett Boone with his sixth home run of the year as it was a 2-0 lead for the Cincinnati Reds the Chicago Cubs come back in this one as this one just sneaks out over top of the Ivy in the sixth inning, Sammy Sosa with the high pop. Pete Short dives and comes up with a great play. And right now, this one remains tied 2-2 in the sixth inning. Let's get back to Gary and Paul. John, thanks very much. And back at Camden Yards, you saw the wild pitch delivered by Magnati. That'll move Zahn down to second base and give the RBI chance to Curtis Goodwin, the number nine hitter. One for one and a sacrifice in this game. Got another shot at an RBI here. Rips that one foul. Speedster able to beat one out in his last at bat in that number nine spot. Curtis Goodwin has an interesting stance the way he sets up. You remember Julio Franco, the way he used to have the bat up behind his head? Well, Curtis Goodwin gives you a little bit of that same look. Now, he'll get it into a little bit better set position as the pitcher gets ready to deliver. But from that point, you've got to be extremely quick to get to the hitting zone. Ground ball not hit hard. Got the runner trapped. Good play by Magnati to get him in the rundown here. Zahn chased down. Forces it the other way. Lockhart running him back to put the tag on. But he stayed in it long enough to allow Curtis Goodwin to get down to second base. He'll get there on the fielder's choice. Magnati just looks on back until he was sure he had him in the rundown. This is a good trade-off for the Orioles. A lot more speed on his second base now with Curtis Goodwin. You get the catcher back on the bench where he can put on his catching gear rest up for the next half inning to work with Scott Erickson one four five and the put out and now RBI opportunity for the man who already has three doubles Brady Anderson three doubles two RBIs and a run scored only in the fifth inning of the ball game he's been a huge force here for Baltimore thus far in this game Magnetti's pitch to him is taken for a strike. The Orioles record for doubles in a game is four. A record that is shared by Charlie Lau in 62 and Dave Duncan in 75. Now, all the great hitters they have had here in an Orioles uniform and we're talking Charlie Lau <laughs> and Dave Duncan. Not bad players but not the kind of guys you would have thought would have four doubles in a game. Well, he always talked about how he couldn't hit at all, and he learned a lot about hitting by not hitting. And he, of course, taught George Brett and Hal McRae, really developed those guys. And Dave Duncan, now a pitching coach with the Oakland A's, has been the right hand man with Tony La Russa for a long time. And there's Frank Robinson, maybe the greatest offensive player in the history of the Orioles. He doesn't hold that record, well, the assistant general manager. And Brady Anderson will have a chance to join that group if he can get another double in this ballgame. Takes the pitch outside from the left-hander. One ball, two strike count. One away, runner on at second base. The bottom half of the fifth inning with the Orioles up 9-1. They have not been retired in order in this game. They have stranded four. But more importantly for the Orioles, they've got nine in. Oh, 
Anderson waiting. Off the fist to right. Hyatt there puts it away. Runner tagging will not move up. And Brady Anderson is finally retired in this game. This time in four at bats. Brady Anderson wasn't necessarily an instant success when he got to the big leagues. You remember he started out with the Boston Red Sox. They got a little bit tired of waiting on him. They included him in a trade over here when the Red Sox were trying to win a division. They traded for the very popular Mike Boddicker. Boddicker finished up his big league career in a Royals uniform. Brady Anderson still didn't perform all that well his first year over here, but he's a solid player right now. Great job in the leadoff spot. Not a prototype leadoff hitter when you look at his makeup as a hitter. But he's gotten it done for him. Magnani misses down low to Manny Alexander. Alexander hit by a pitch scored in the first has since flied out and struck out. Three doubles for Brady Anderson three singles for Cal Ripken a double and two singles for Harold Baines in this game Leo Gomez a three run homer again that good off speed delivery swung on and missed. One ball, one strike. 24 years old. Manny Alexander paid the dues six years at the minors. Getting the chance here. And he's not catching up with them. Falls behind on the count here. Most of his work in the minor leagues was done as a shortstop. He didn't make that conversion until last year. He split time between shortstop and second base at the minor league level last year. So now playing second base on an everyday basis at the big leagues and still learning that position. I'd say it's been a little bit tough for Cal Ripken too because it play of the shortstop is so dependent on your keystone combination partner. Call third strike. Magnani gets his second strikeout of the game. Runner left stranded at second base. Baltimore Orioles continue to lead at 9-1 after five at Camden Yards. Scott Erickson ready to rock and roll here in the sixth inning and the first ball delivered by Lockhart for a base hit into right field. So the leadoff batter Lockhart gets his first hit. He is now one for three in the ball game. And the Kansas City Royals have their third single of the game of Scott Erickson. But that has been it for the base hits. Chris Steins will get his first at bat as he came on to play second base. Fouls that one off for a strike. Burrow's doing a lot of first ball hitting over the last couple innings since the Orioles have blown this ball game wide open. They know that Scott Erickson is going to try to make first pitch strike one. First shot that they get looking at that fastball, they might as well pass on that first offering. Yeah. We're getting to see a few of the Kansas City Royals in tonight's game. <laughs> getting to see pretty much all the roster. Chris Times will be an unfamiliar face and name to a number of our viewers. He was the guy that was acquired in the David Cohn trade in the offseason. A lot of baseball people around the league say that that would not have been possible a year ago with the general manager that the Blue Jays had at that time. Pat Gillick was very fond of this young player. Royals are hopeful for his future. They think he's going to be an outstanding second baseman. They compare him a lot to Chuck Knobloch of the Minnesota Twins. Came up on the 4th of July in AAA, where he hit 280, 52 games there. Chance for two, maybe. Alexander and got him at first and got him at second. Good play as Ripken puts the tag on. There's one of those backward double plays. Alexander couldn't tag him, so they had to go to first, then to second, and the tag had to be applied. Alexander handles this play like he's playing second base all of his life. This is the key portion of it. Forced that base runner, the lead man, back to first to buy a little time. Got Lockhart stopped. The throw to first. Palmero, who played outfield earlier in his career with the Chicago Cubs, throws pretty well. On to Ripken for the twin killing. Tough play for that throw by Palmero. That is one of the tough throws in the game because you got that runner between yourself and the bag. And Ripken took the throw right where he needed to down low. Lockhart coming in on it. So two down and the bases are cleared. A 
the games going on around Major League Baseball. The Rangers are still up in the Red Sox, and that'll please the Baltimore Orioles. Chris James getting his first at bat here. James lines that one into left field for a base hit. Good went over to get it and gets it back in. So James is on with a single in his first at bat, but there are two down. Chris James came on to play in the outfield with bat in Wally Joyner's number three hole. Two down, one on. And Bob Hamlin will stand in. Run right on four hits now. Off Scott Erickson for the Royals. Hamlin 0 for 2. Batting at just 188. But he certainly did put on the show last season, coming away with those Rookie of the Year honors. And is the hammer back is the question in KC. No, he not only had good numbers for the rookie, but he had clutch home runs. Maybe the biggest home run was a home run to straightaway center field at Kauffman Stadium in an extra inning ball game. And game the Royals came from behind to beat the White Sox. And that started a 14-game winning streak that actually thrust the Royals back into the race in the Central Division. Hammer, a big part of a lot of the clutch hitting on that team a year ago. Did not hit at all early on. In fact, there's a big disparity between the number two man in the All-Star, the Rookie of the Year battling last year, Manny Ramirez, the right fielder of the Cleveland Indians. Ramirez having a great year for his club again this year. Hamlin has not been much of a factor over here. Quite the dive going from that 282 average to 188. And he had, of course, the 24 home runs last season in that rookie year. Pitch to him towards short. It'll be played by Cal Ripken over to first. Hamlin is retired. No runs, a couple of hits, only one left on. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning here at Camden Yards with the Orioles leading by a score of 9-1. And Cal do up second in the world. Rafael Palmero will lead it off for Baltimore as we go to the bottom half of the sixth. Magnati coming on and taking some innings after Kevin Apier had his shortest appearance of the season, two-plus innings. Giving up six runs and eight hits. Magnati was then greeted with a three run homer by Gomez. But got him out the last inning without Baltimore picking up a run for the first time in the ball game. Barbary has come out in the on deck circle. He said, Oh, we've seen a few Kansas City players. Well, I suspect we're going to see a few Baltimore Orioles. A few of those birds in the back of the cage are going to be making an appearance. Swung on and missed by Palmero. Kind of ironic. Here's a guy who's not in the hit parade, 0 for 3. He's been in the hit parade already in this series. Three base hits, three RBIs, a home run here in the first game of the series helped bring the Orioles back. But he was really impressed in their season opener here a year ago. He was welcomed so warmly by their fans and going around the league and covering all the teams. You know, always the argument, well, who's got the best fans? Who's the most behind their ball club? I'll tell you, these Orioles folks, they take care of their homeboys. And he's in the hit right now. <laughs> so Palmero gets his first hit on the 15th hit for the Baltimore Orioles in this game. A leadoff single. And Barbary has come up. Brett Barbary will pinch it here for Cal Ripken. What a night for Ripken as he went three for three in RBI and two run score. Now Ripken will come out of the game and Barbary will be able to say, remember that year Cal Ripken bested the Iron Man's record. Well, I pinch hit for him. Barbary pinch hitting here. He'll be staying in the ball game. Switch hitter as a pinch hitter, three for seven. Batting 206 right, 325 left. Magnati misses inside to him. One ball and one strike. Magnati came on in the third inning. Two runs have been scored off him. Three runs, excuse me, have scored off Magnetti. Brett Barbary, the opening day second baseman for the Orioles, had a tough spring. Didn't get off to a good start with either the bat or the glove. He wasn't in the starting lineup all that long before they brought along Manny Alexander. Well, this is a real short night for Cal. 
We told you he plays in what 99.2 percent of the innings. This may drop it down to 99.1. Brett Barbary waiting. The 2 1 delivery is grounded foul. Only the fifth time? The fifth time that Kell has been pinch hit for during that during the streak. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Second I mean, if you're going to take him out yeah. of the ball game, you're going to let him hit. Yeah. You know, the only reason Barbary is in here to hit right now is to get him in a bat. You got to feel that the Orioles have enough runs scored in this ball game already to win it. So, give the backup guy an opportunity to swing the bat. Most of the time, you'd let Cal hit, then call it off, tell him to head on in. Fifth time in 13 years against Pitt hit, pinch hit for. Hauled in. Utley puts it away in center field. Barbary is retired. And there's one down here. Baseball night in America is being brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. By Sears. Come see the many sides of Sears. And Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Great to have you with us on the opening night. Baseball night in America. Camden Yards of the Orioles are celebrating it with a 9-1 lead. Over the Kansas City Royals. Nero Baines a big part of that. His part of the celebration is three for three. Double two singles. RBI and a run scored for the veteran Baines. The designated hitter. Hasn't been in the field for a couple of years now. A couple of knees that don't work too well. But when you hit the ball as hard as he does and where you hit it. There's enough left in those knees to get you there. Harold Baines always been a quality hitter at the major league level and as you mentioned at DH now you think of the clubs that he has played for he has been in the middle of some really solid lineups. He first came up with the Chicago White Sox went to the Texas Rangers. They've always had bombers in their lineup went out to the Oakland A's in the middle of that lineup with the Oakland ball club their DH now here in Baltimore with this club. He has always been on quality offensive teams. Four for four, Paul. And not a bad stroke. Not a bad stroke. So a four for four night for Harold Baines with three singles and a double. He's on it first, down to second base. Rafael Palmero and Leo Gomez up again with runners on. This has been a Gomez RBI night. Four RBIs tonight ties his career high for a game. Fourth time he has done it. Gomez has got a shot at adding to it batting only 215 on the season first and second occupied here with one down Magnati's pitch is a fastball away ball one Orioles two in the first two in the second four in the third and one in the fourth pile up their nine one lead they now have 16 hits in this game. And Magnani misses with that one down low and falls behind. Two balls and no strikes. We had mentioned, Paul mentioned earlier about Leo Gomez getting the start because he hit so well against Kevin Athier. Had a lot on the line tonight. Had a player earlier in the series that had a lot on the line. We talked about the roster changes. Guys coming off the disabled list, most notably pitchers. Arthur Rhodes has been a guy that they had used in their starting rotation all year. In fact, it never worked out of the bullpen. Came on in the first inning for Mike Mussini here in game one. And Rhodes went on to work seven innings, strike out ten, walk just one. And with those changes coming in their starting rotation, you got to figure he might be one of the guys heading on back. He saved his position. He's still on the roster. Now you've got some other possible moves on their 25-man roster. you got to wonder whether Gomez was going to be a part of it. They're going to make a decision on him in the next 24 hours. They'll have a, a game fresh on their minds. Good performance from Gomez. Yeah, he's done a good job here in this game. Two balls and two strikes. There is Dave Fleming in the bullpen for the Royals. Magnati has picked up the innings here in the middle for KC. Trying to get out of the six right now, though, with one down and two on. 30 year old left hander. 2 2 delivery inside to Gomez, and it's full house. Mike Magnanti is quite a story health wise he has had surgery on both of his knees in fact you'll notice that he still wears the rather bulky braces on both of his knees he's quite an athlete feels his position very well does a good job there and those braces don't slow him down in fact he's worn them so long he feels very comfortable he'd feel undressed without him and feel that it slows him down at all not an easy way to work I would think 
Three two delivery. Check swing. Did he go? Check it first. No. There's Larry McCoy. So the bases are loaded. Magnati has given up his second walk. And the Orioles really threatening to blow the doors further off in this ball game. The base is loaded and one away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Palmero goes over to third. Baines down to second. And Gomez on at first. And Jeffrey Hammonds will get the RBI opportunity here with the sacks full. The infield of KC will play for two. His single came in the second inning. Hammonds of the base is full. Strike one. A very strong average with runners in scoring position for Jeffrey Hammonds. Overall, a 246. Way above that. And he's had a chance to pick up RBIs. Fouls it back. Magnetti goes ahead on him. No balls and two strikes. Hammonds batting only 213 against left handers coming into this game. It's the RBI chance. You see Palmero and Baines getting their leads. Over at first base, Gomez who drew the walk. Magnati with one down and the base is loaded. The 0-2 delivery. Reach covering the plate. Down the line and foul. Not by a whole lot. In the right field corner. One of the other things that's happened here when the scoreboard was put up in right field in Camden Yards, many thought it would be a bing bang boom kind of table setter for guys who pull the ball down the line. There have been very few balls hit off that scoreboard in Camden Yards since it went up. It's one of those things that hasn't happened. One of the reasons it was put out there was to kind of replicate some of the old ballparks that had those scoreboards where left-handed hitters used to rattle them around. Other ballparks that have been recently built here in the American League have gone to that same type look. Jacobs Field in Cleveland has got it in left field. The ballpark in Arlington has it in left field as well. So yep. the new ballparks look old. Look like they've been here forever. Yep. And Magnetti gets him. So the third strikeout of the game for Mike Magnetti. Two down as Hammonds is retired. Well, you can see what McNancy's game is over the last few innings. He wants to slow down bat speed, change speeds, and actually the Orioles aren't getting as good of swings against him as they did against Kevin Apier who started the game. Apier is normally overpowering, so you look for hard stuff against Apier. They had hard swings, but they've been fooled pretty regularly here by McNancy. Now they're trying to work his way out of the inning. Bases remain loaded. Now there are two away for Greg Zahn. Zahn, the catcher. Takes the strike. Did receive an update on Hoyles, who started the game behind the plate. A slight strain of the left hand string for Baltimore catcher Chris Hoyles, who started first at bat at a single and pulled up with a hammy problem at first base. Greg Zahn came on to run for him and got a hit in his first time up. Hitting 240, bases loaded here, takes the strike 0 and 2. Didn't like the call, thought it was at least inside, maybe a little high. Well, that looks exactly like Rick Dempsey. Just the walk away from the plate. Mad half the time. He's a little bit smaller than Rick. Rick's only 5'10 and about 170. One ball, two strikes inside there. Premier night. Baseball night in America. Delighted to have you with us here at Camden Yards. Gary Thorne, Paul Splitor. Royals won the first two games of this series, but the Orioles blasted away early in this game against Kevin Apier of the 9-1 lead. Grounded towards third. Lockhart up with it as the force at second base. Gets it over to Stein, and that will do it. The Orioles leave. The base is loaded. Couple of hits do not get anybody in against a good performance by Mike Magnani, who had to hold some innings on. We'll return with Baseball Night in America after this from our ABC stations. Led the Yankees in RBIs seven consecutive seasons. Not in the 90s, but in years gone by. Which two Yankees led them in RBIs seven consecutive years? Hmm. Got a lot of great names to choose from. 
I bet you have to go back a while. I would see the numbers on Erickson. Boy, he has been on ground balls. We told you he's a ground ball pitcher, and he's had them tonight. I would have to say Yogi, somewhere along the way, one of the most unheralded run RBI producers in baseball for all the years he played. I'm trying to think from the time I hit the big leagues through the 70s. I don't think you'd have found anybody with a stretch of seven years. That's a pretty long time. 80s probably going to be the same story. A lot of turnover with that ball club here in the 90s. So we'll think about it. 60s or before. Alexander has moved over to play shortstop now for Ripken. Barbary will pinch hit for Ripken stays in at second base. Well, that's a long time to lead in RBIs. 3 2 got him. Erickson gets the strikeout. That is his fourth K. Okay. And there's one away here in the seventh inning. Other games going on. The update with John Saunders. Little defense and a little offense here. Sosa squares around a bunt, and P. Short gets actually a late start, but chases after it, dives, comes up with a great stab, and the game is still tied at 2-2, but not for long. Jerome Walton finds the gap out in left center field. Barry Larkin comes in to score. 3-2, the Cincinnati Reds take the lead over the Chicago Cubs. That's where it stands now. Play in the eighth inning. The Braves in the Padres. It was 5-0 for Andy Ashby. It was 6-2 for Andy Ashby when he faced Dwight Smith with two aboard, a three-run home run, and the Braves are within a run. Bryce Flory comes in and faces Jeff Blauser with a runner on, and this is a two-run shot. And the Braves jump in front of the Padres six to five seven to six now is the lead atlanta over top of the san diego padres and the twins in the yankees it's been a tough night in the bronx for the bombers marty cordova with a single here pocket comes in muñoz follows him and a 5-4 game is now seven to four the yankees trail in the seventh inning caceres just got hit let's go back to you gary and paul John, thanks very much, and that one hurt just watching, even without hearing the sound of it, as Caceres took this shot from Scott Erickson. Right on the outside of the knee. I'll tell you, there is no muscle, not much flesh to cover the bone there. And there's not a lot a hitter can do. Your weight is against that front foot. You don't have a lot of mobility. Ooh, you couldn't have placed that ball any better on the side of the knee. Sounded bad. Man. Uh, he will be helped off, and no surprise there. Andrew Caceres has started at second, moved over to first, gingerly trying not to put any weight on that leg. He'll come out of the ball game being hit by a pitch. Greg Gagne will be the pinch runner for him. And that's going to hurt even more as the night wears on. Wow. Scott Erickson throughout his career has never come up with what you would call the cut or the rider be a little bit easier to keep that ball in and pitch effectively inside against the left-handers. He's continually got that ball tailing away. So when he works inside to a left-hander, he's going to be, have to be careful. He's probably going to hit some guys because he's got to start it off the plate and try to back it up and get it onto that corner. If he cuts it a little too fine, that ball's going to tail out on the inner half of the plate. He's going to give up some long balls. Not to hitters like Caceres. He doesn't have a lot of power, but some of the bigger, stronger guys in the league. One of the things he'll probably work on over the next few years is some kind of a cutter so he can start it on a plate and work it to the corner instead of starting it out inside and then trying to back it up. That's pretty difficult to do. Well, Caceres out of the game. Erickson has hit five this year. First one he's hit in the Baltimore while he's been in a Baltimore uniform. And Gagne pinch running is on at first base. David Howard up. Howard the 0 for 2 is hit into a double play. And takes the pitch inside. At 172 batting average. He's learning about the Mendoza line. And you don't want to spend too much time around that line, or you won't spend too much time at the major league level. Well, he plays defense so well and he's so versatile that his average 
Well, he's probably never going to be an outstanding hitter. He'll be able to help a ball club because of the positions that he can play and the versatility that he brings to a ball club. But as you mentioned, that Mendoza line, he's still going to have to hit well for a while. He's playing the bat better now than he has all season long. Actually, his average has been on the climb for the last couple of weeks. Gagne goes down to second base and will stay there. But the base hit picked up by Howard. Put her running is on at first and second. You see the 80 total that have been thrown by 27 year old Scott Erickson who's walked two and struck out four in this game. Nine one lead for the Orioles and trying to cut into that Brent Maine. Maine picked up an RBI in his last time up at a ground ball out. Runners on at first and second base here. Flanagan on the bullpen phone. He never got to use the other end of it because he spent so much time starting and staying for the Baltimore Orioles. Well, he came up at a great time in this organization. He had veteran guys in front of him and he jumped right into a starting rotation. He was the kind of guy that would go out and make 35 to 38 starts a year and 240, 250 innings, keep his club in the game. You mentioned eat a lot of innings, win a lot of ball games. Occasionally win a big award. Occasionally. <laughs> Some kind of staff. You say that he was part of here. A very quick trip to talk to Scott Erickson. 2-0 the count. Runners at first and second. One down. Brent Maine. Adding just 205. Takes that one down the left field line. Brady Anderson over. Makes the catch in fair territory, and the runners will go back two away. Orioles just starting to familiarize themselves with their new starter, Scott Erickson. In Minnesota, he was known as Dr. Death. No white lettering on his glove. He's got a black sweatband across the back of it. No white markings on his shoes. No white on his socks. They've already got a pitcher on their staff who likes to wear the black jerseys when they play their games. That's Ben McDonald. He says, that's just the rules. I start, we're wearing black. Even Erickson last night. Yeah, Erickson continues to pitch well for this ball club. It might not be long before he's dealing out those black jerseys as well. You guys will love these stars. It may make them play even faster behind them, though. <laughs> Here's Hyatt fouling it back. It's about a hundred and something degrees down there, and you're wearing a black uniform. They had him out here this afternoon during yeah. batting practice. We were both down on the field in shirts that are still drying out. Yeah. Hung to dry and not doing very well, I might add. Two down, one strike count on Hyatt. Runners on at first and second for the Royals here in the seventh inning. Hyatt swings and misses. Slider down and away to him. Two strike count. Scott Erickson certainly looks better than the guy who was giving up the 109 hits in 93 innings. He has given up only five and only one run in this game. And that was on a ground ball out. Hyatt chops it. Fair ball. Big throw made by Zahn. And that'll take care of KC. No runs the base hit. Seventh inning stretch time. Camden Yards where the Orioles that favored the home crowd. 9-1. Exploding here with a 9-1 lead as the crowd settles in. Let's take a look at how you did on tonight's Toyota Diamond Dust baseball question. The Yankees, which two players led the Yankees in RBIs in each of seven consecutive seasons? We talked about Yogi Berra. I would not have guessed Lou Gehrig, but there he is. The two who did it each of seven consecutive years on some pretty good teams. Defensive changes being made here. Gagne stays in the ballgame at shortstop. Howard. Has moved over to first base, and Paul Splitorf, we've got a new pitcher, Dave Fleming. Dave Fleming just acquired over the last couple weeks from the Seattle Mariners organization. Fleming off to a bad start this year with the M's. He was actually optioned out to their Tacoma ball club pitching at the AAA level. The trade was made at that AAA level. Former Baltimore Oriole Bob Malacky was pitching well for Omaha, and he made the American Association All-Star team. Those two players were traded for each other. Fleming called up immediately to the big league club. We mentioned earlier Chris Haney, a left-handed starter all season long, is now out with a back injury, so Fleming is an insurance policy. Curtis Goodwin took a long look out there at Fleming, and he bailed out on that pitch. A little concerned about whether there was being a little retribution was being seen right there. 
Fleming coming on and throwing one uh, little chin music on him after Erickson had hit the batter. Line that one towards left field, not particularly deep. James diving, can't get it, falls in on his way to second base. With all that speed, Curtis Goodwin's got a double. Chris James tried to shoestring that, not quite. Hey, Fleming would like to get off to a good start here tonight. He was cuffed around his only appearance with the Royals. That was in that single game in New York, the first game after the All-Star break. Got hit hard in that outing, so he wants to establish the strike zone. Finesse guy who keeps the ball out of the middle of the plate. Needs to keep it down to be effective. Rocky start here in the seventh inning tonight. Curtis Goodwin delivers the double. He's on at second base, leadoff man on. And Brady Anderson takes a little chin music inside. Ball one. A season high 17 hits for the Baltimore Orioles and you see Brady Anderson's contribution to this hit parade tonight here at Camden Yards upping his average to 271 from 264 off the fist fouls that one back Magnati went four innings charged with three runs on eight hits after starter Kevin Apier the winningest pitcher in the league had gone two plus gave up six runs on eight hits. Now we see Dave Fleming left hander on in relief here with a runner on at second base for Brady Anderson. And a side arms that one into him tough for the left hander to stick on that kind of delivery. Two ball one strike count on Anderson. Anderson hitting just 203 off southpaws before tonight's game. Look over his head. Fleming missing high and inside. Now he's had trouble this year keeping his arm up. And if we take a look at another look at his delivery, look at the position of his elbow, how it's down even with his shoulder, maybe even a little bit below. That's a guy who has been hurt before. He didn't always throw like that. He's usually had good command, but over the last couple of years, he's fought some elbow injuries. As long as that elbow drops, he'll have a hard time keeping the ball down. And he overcompensates, and this is way outside. So Fleming gives up a walk, a double and a walk to the first two batters he has played, faced in this game. And the Orioles again have two on and nobody out here in the seventh. Again, that's not a good sign for Dave Fleming. One of the keys for left-handers, you've got to get out left-handed hitters. No way to get around it. They bring you in to face the lefties. You're expected to retire most of them. First two lefties that he faces here tonight reach base against him. Now let's see what he does here with a right-hander, Manny Alexander. Alexander looking for his first hit has gone 0 for 3. He was hit by a pitch off Kevin Apier in the first inning and scored one of the two runs in the first for the Orioles. Two on here, nobody out. Drills that one. Monster foul ball down the left field line. Strike one. Right handers hitting 316 off Fleming thus far this season. Manny Alexander waiting. Good one with outstanding speed, the lead runner. The off speed breaking ball misses. One ball and one strike. There is Goodwin at second base. Base hit, and he'll be around before the outfielder picks it up. Anderson at first. Fouled off of the plate. It is a fair ball. They throw down to get one and won't be able to get anybody else, and there'll be an argument on this one. Alexander thought that hit him in the batter's box, I think, or at least that it was picked up in foul territory, but Jim Evans, the home plate umpire, waited and immediately signaled fair once it was touched up by Brent Main, the catcher, who threw out Alexander. You know, Gary, most of the time an umpire, when the ball is chopped foul or chopped straight down at home plate, they lose sight of the ball. So most umpires will almost always call it foul because they don't know what it hit. They lose sight of it. They got a chance to stay out of trouble if they call it a foul ball. From this angle, it looked like it rolled into foul territory. If you look at where the umpire is to make this call, he's behind the catcher. 
He didn't have as good an angle as what our first camera angle had. And he is screened off by that catcher. And that's one of the reasons a lot of umpires, and that's the point I'm trying to make, they lose sight of the ball. Tough call for that home plate umpire. And I'm not sure that Jim, Jim Evans got a good look at that when he's trying to work out from behind that catcher. He maybe never saw it. He was assertive, however, in making the call. Now there are two in scoring position. Jeff Mando pinch hitting for Rafael Palmero. Mando getting his first shot in the game. Has not had an at-bat as a pinch hitter, but has appeared in 44 games, hitting 282. Mando with 12 home runs and 30 RBIs. Jeff Mando in for Palmero. Two in scoring position for him and one away. With the Orioles up 9-1. Up high is Fleming. Mando, he is cleaned up on left handers. 16 for 40, a 400 batting average off lefties, including three home runs. Mando has spent time the last couple years in the minor leagues. He came up with Cleveland. Three or four years ago, young third baseman, big strapping kid with the big swing. You could usually get him to chase something out of the strike zone. He settled things down a little bit. He's coming off the disabled list. He was out with a hamstring injury. He'll probably be anxious to get something on the board. Takes the call strike on the 3-0 pitch. Three balls, one strike. First base open with one away here. Barbary is hitting in the four hole. 3-1 delivery to him. Matto out in front. Elastic pitch right there. Good one by Fleming on the changeup. Oh, the count is full. Good one on at third base. Anderson down at second. One down. 3-2 the count. Pitch is swung on and missed. He got him. So Fleming gets his first strikeout as Mando, the pinch hitter, goes down swinging for the second out in the seventh. Last two pitches by Fleming were pretty good. A straight changeup had Mando out in front, and now the fastball followed up. Mando's behind that one. Fleming, he's not overpowering, but he's able to throw that fastball by him by changing speeds. Barbary, Brett Barbary up for the second time, flied out to center field his first time up, batting in the cleanup spot. He's hitting 358 over his last 22 games. He has been red hot in there. Barbary chops that one towards short. Going to be a tough pickup play made the first and they got him. So good work done by Fleming with a couple in scoring position to get out of trouble there. The Orioles leave 2 on still have a 9 1 lead after seven. Orioles scored early and often against the Royals here tonight. Scott Erickson was outstanding through the first seven innings. He's done for the night as Jesse Orozco comes out of that Orioles bullpen. And right now, let's take a look at tonight's MCI proof positive replay. Chris Steins, the hitter for the Royals, rolls the ground ball out to Alexander, the second baseman. He stops Lockhart halfway between first and second to Palmero for the force out there. Ripken at second base. The Orioles turn that one over in the unusual 4-3-6. CI proof positive play of the game. There is Jesse Orozco, the veteran left-hander, on for the Orioles, and he has been successful for them, making his 31st appearance, one and one. He's worked just 20 innings, given up only 13 hits, walking nine, striking out 25. Opponents hitting just 197. This is his primary job in close games, more often than not, is to come in against left-handers. So Orozco pitching, Matos stays in the ball game plays at first base for Palmero. Roscoe coming inside as the left handers keep nudging left handed hitters off the plate. Keith Lockhart here. Lockhart a single in his last at bat. 366 on the year for him can't catch up with the off speed curveball. One ball two strikes. Left handers as you would expect not doing well 156 off Jesse Orozco five for 32. But overall opponents are hitting only 197. 
Yeah, our bullpen starting to set up pretty well right now. They've got good balance out there with left-handers Mark Lee and Jesse Orozco. Terry Clark has been a wonderful addition for their club. He and Lee have been working left-handed, right-handed bridge men trying to get it into the later innings. Right now they're using Doug Jones as their closer. He lost the first game of the series, but four quality relievers they can bring out of their pen right now. 14 of the 16 saves have gone to Jones. Swung on, hit down the line in right field. A deep Hammonds over will not have a play on it. Lockhart on his way to second base. Hammonds, a strong throw, will not be in time. So Lockhart has his second hit and a double leading off the eighth inning for the Royals. Good job of hitting against the left hander. Roscoe normally works with the breaking ball, trying to keep the ball down in the strike zone. That one fastball he threw up and in was trying to set up everything else that he wanted to do down on the plate and on the outer half. Lockhart able to get that ball into the air down in the right field corner. No leadoff double in the eighth inning puts Lockhart on. Chris Steins will stand in his second at bat, 0 for 1. He grounded out. Done three for 20 against left handers with that 150 batting average. Orozco will have to contend with the runner at second base. That one launched towards center field. Good one right there, puts it away. There'll be no tag. Steins is retired, one away. Back to second base goes Lockhart. Want to remind you, Monday on ABC Sports, both of these teams will be showcased. Baseball Night in America returns. Many of you will see these Royals take on the powerful Boston Red Sox at Fenway. Others who see Cal Ripken continue his streak. The Orioles head to Texas to play the Rangers at the ballpark in Arlington. Other regional action, check your local listings for the game in your area. That's Monday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on ABC. One away in the KC half of the eighth inning. And Chris James, who's had one at bat and singled, stands in against Dorosco. James 304 against the Southpaws takes the pitch outside for a ball. Royals had a lot. Of, excuse me, Gary. Royals had a lot of left-handed hitters in there at the start of tonight's yeah. ball game. With a left-hander, Jamie Moyer, scheduled tomorrow. Probably going to see James in the starting lineup. Probably going to see Steins, who was the last hitter in there. Gagne may even get the start at shortstop. Deep down the left field line, Anderson over will not have a play. Uh, Boone does like to platoon his lined up, try to match things up. His club struggles offensively. He'd like to give him the advantage. Get a lot of right-handers in there against a left-handed starter tomorrow. The Royals still undecided for their starting pitcher tomorrow. The Indians, after taking a doubleheader, being beaten early in that ball game. White Sox and Brewers, they got rain delay. A lot of rain around. National League. Game's well along. Hey. Maybe the Braves will lose a game. You think that'll happen before the end of the year? Have you seen them lately? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Just for the All-Star break. Saw them in uh, Atlanta. Had to have been a lot of fun for you. No, uh, <laughs> not when you're broadcasting for the other team. <laughs> no, not a lot of fun at all, actually. They are loaded. Their pitching staff, of all the pitching staff probably in baseball, hurt by the limited spring training. Atlanta probably hurt more than any. Their starters need to stretch out early in the year and they didn't and now they're stretched out now they're ready to go and they've just all come around at the same time Maddox and Avery and Smoltz Glavin Mercy fouled off Mark Wallers is now taking over the job in the bullpen that was up for grabs as the primary closer he's he's really earned it there, there aren't many holes around the Atlanta Braves right now what in the world has happened to the Phillies well, I think, you know, if you really look at that pitching staff in Philadelphia, I think there were some mirrors in there early on in the season. You know, they had some guys performing. Tyler Green, for one, really weren't expected to do what they did. May have played a little above their heads and starting to catch up with them a little bit. James waiting. Orozco delivers, and the breaking ball misses inside, do it. Runner at second base, one down. James trying to pick up the RBI in this 9-1 ball game with the Orioles on top. Orozco's 2-2 delivery misses outside. Fell down on that pitch. Three balls, two strikes. 
Roscoe's favorite pitcher is the one taken when his glove was in the air, and so was he in 1986, last out World Series against the Red Sox. Then he pitched for the New York Mets. And the year they won it, he was on the mound. Wrapping it up. And he walked him. So Orozco gives up the walk here, putting runners on at first and second as James is on. Orozco, the closer for what, four years over there during that time with a pretty solid pitching staff. Very solid staff. He had to throw quite a bit harder then than he is right now. Yep. And did. He came in and blew right-handers and left-handers away at that time. Marad Hendricks on the telephone, flying again at the other end. Are they talking to each other? I don't think so. Jesse Orozco, the double and a walk now, has put two on with one away. And Bob Hamlin. Here you see the numbers. Four home runs versus lefties in 95. We were talking about earlier. Just turned it around. You mentioned earlier the last four home runs he has hit have been against left-handers, so here's another opportunity. He's not necessarily a pull hitter. He can take the ball up the middle, even opposite way, and still have good power the opposite way. Left-hander try to negate that pull power. Rosco going on the outer half to play with the breaking ball there. And a two-strike count on Hamlin. Infield, of course, to the Orioles looking for the ground ball. Try and turn two here. Hamlin has hit a couple of ground balls and struck out in the 0 for 3 as tonight, hitting 187. Orozco had him double clutch on that one. Took a lot off it. Hamlin started, stopped, and then finally able to protect the plate and foul it off. Holds the count at two strikes. Well, Hamlin is a fly ball hitter all the way, but he's going to have to hit on Orozco's terms here for a couple of pitches. If the left-hander can make a pitch against him. He'll probably get that ground ball. If he can get it, he's got a good chance for the double play. Runners with their leads at first and second. The 0-2 delivery, and he got him. Laid that one in on the outside corner. Bottom part of the strike zone, Orozco. Picking up the strikeout there, two down. Wide sweeping curveball, Orozco. Maybe it was a hard thrower in the middle 80s when he was the closer. He's a finesse guy now. But he can make pitches with off-speed stuff. And he does right there against Hamlin. So John Nunnally will be the man with a chance after Hamlin goes down on that call third strike. Orozco trying to get out of this. Lockhart on at second base. James on at first, two down. Nunnally has gone the distance in this ball game and has scored the lone run in the fifth inning on a ground ball out. And Orozco misses up high to win ball one. To joined us late in this ball game, Brady Anderson picked up three doubles and a couple of RBIs. It's been a three-run homer by Leo Gomez, his first home run of the season. Big blows. Baines has added a four-hit ball game and one RBI. Breaking ball, misses down low. Everybody has joined in one way or the other. And Scott Erickson, a good, strong seven innings, a run on five hits, walked two, and struck out four. Stands to win his sixth game of the season and his second against no losses as an Oriole. 1 0 delivery by Orozco. Breaking ball. You see it tie up the left hander. Almost freezes him. Nunnally wanted to move, but body just wouldn't come around for him. <laughs> well, Nunnally also wants to hit the fastball. He likes to go to the plate, especially early in the count, looking for the fastball. Orozco, knowing that, probably not going to give it up. One ball, one strike. More inside that time, two and one. Twenty-three-year-old John Nunnally. Played all three outfield positions. Swung on, grounded, foul outside of first base. Hey, you're probably not going to see him in center field all that often in a Royals uniform. He came up through the minor leagues. It's interesting how Cleveland handled him. They didn't want him playing just one outfield position. They put him in right field, left field, center field. He played a lot of center field in the minor leagues. Of course, at A ball to play about anywhere, but he is probably best suited for left field. Indians, it looked like they had plans to use him maybe as a backup player. Didn't want him locked into just one position. How's his arm? Pretty good. And he throws accurately. Runners go. It's fouled off down the third baseline on the 3-2 count. And the fans get on home plate umpire Jim Evans for 
the call he made previously on a ball that he said was fair that the Orioles thought was foul. You just can't win. Gilda used to say it's always something. Three two. Let's face it. Baseball was built on getting on the umpires. They had the second guessing. What are they going to do when the rule changes take place at the end of the month? Trying to get guys in the batter's box and pitchers to throw within 12 seconds. Man, have they got a task ahead of them. Not only waiting and the breaking ball misses, he draws the walk and the bases are loaded. Well, in college basketball, they've come up with that 19-foot arc for the three-point shot. Are they going to come up with the three-foot arc for outside the batter's box to help the umpires with the measurements since they can now come out of the box and they're going to have to figure out three feet? I think it's going to slow down the game for a while. So instead gonna, of speeding it up. Uh, because they're all going to have to adjust to it. And everybody's going to argue about it. Yeah, and they're all talking about the strike zone changing a little bit. Everybody's got his own strike zone. All the umpires, all their umpires have their own three feet, too, that they're going to measure yeah. outside yeah. the box. So I think they ought to go with an arc. Oh, Lordy. So Jesse Orozco coming on in this inning. Not exactly successfully as he leaves with the bases loaded. A double and two walks against him. The Orioles leading it by a score of 9-1. Sacks full for KC. Well, we're going to see a new pitcher. His name, Terry Clark. Clark is one of those options that the Orioles have in the pen when they go left-right. Clark, very effective in middle relief. Worked in game one of the series. Conventional pitcher. Fastball, curveball, slider, change. Now used in middle relief. A lot of appearances, but not a whole lot of innings. Wyatt is a free agent, played for the Triple-A team before being called up by Baltimore. Faces Greg Gagne here. Gagne getting his shot at the plate with the bases loaded and two down in the eighth inning. A nine-to-one lead for the Orioles. Roscoe out of there at two-thirds of an inning. Gagne looked like he wanted to go around with it and did not. One ball, one strike on Gagne. One one two down. See Gagne has faced Terry Clark a couple of times. One and two. Boy, we see more and more of these pitchers like Terry Clark showing up in the majors. He got a win on July 7th, first one since 1988 when he had been with the Angels. Arms are in short supply. Kind of interesting. You talk to a lot of the scouts and front office people for organizations, and over and over again, they'll tell you, "Well, we've got good arms at the single A and double A level. We're about two years away from having an overpowering staff." That's been for the last three or four years. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those two or three years? <laughs> well, Clark comes on and gets the fly ball out to Hammonds. That'll retire the side. Three left on. Orioles still up nine-one. Premier night, baseball night in America. Gary Thorne and Paul Split Orphan. Delighted you were able to join us here at Camden Yards where the Baltimore Orioles are on the verge of ending that two-game losing streak and end the two-game win streak of the Kansas City Royals. Kevin Bass pinch hitting for Baines deep to left field. Chris James backing up on this one short of the warning track puts it away. Bass is retired and there's one away in the bottom half of the eighth inning. 47,159 on hand here this night, and we thank the Baltimore Orioles and the fans here for their welcome. It's always a delight to come to Camden Yards in Baltimore. Breaking ball missing inside. 106 degrees announced as the temperature when we started this game. Dip down a little bit. Ooh, what is going on? Gomez says maybe I ought to go out and have a word with Dave Fleming. Jim Evans, the home plate umpire, gets in between them. Still one more game to go in this series. Tomorrow uh, afternoon could be interesting. Very interesting. No, you've got to get back to New York to cover the Mets. Cut fastball right there on that left front leg. Looked familiar. 
Tell you one thing, and I'll take an angle on this one that you probably didn't think of. Edgar Caceres was one of the replacement players, and you never really knew how those guys were going to be treated when they get called to the big leagues. I believe there have been nine of them now across the major leagues that are playing in big league uniforms that crossed the line and played in spring training in those replacement games. Caceres got knocked down earlier this year, and in the back of our mind, we wondered if maybe there was something else behind it. And the fact that if that was retaliation, I have no idea whether it was or not. Replacement player got hit for the Royals. You go ahead and hit another guy who was not a replacement player. Maybe things are coming together. Very interesting. Point well taken. Ninth inning, last chance coming up for KC. Tonight's Chevrolet player of the game, Brady Anderson, in conjunction with this program, Chevrolet will contribute a total of $50,000 to the Boys and Girls Club of America in the names of all players of the game for the 95 Major League Baseball season. And Brady Anderson, one of three doubles that he picked up in this game, in addition to two RBIs, a run scored, and a walk is our Chevrolet player of the game. Big night for Brady Anderson and for the Baltimore Orioles. Clark will try and wrap it up now on the mound for the Orioles against David Howard who leads it off here and takes it outside for a ball. Scott Erickson, pitcher of record. The starter who went seven for Baltimore. That's going to be an extra base hit down the line. Hammond's going over in the right field corner. Howard on his way to second may think about three. Relay throw coming in. He thought about it, but goes back to second base. Barbary cutoff man plays it back in. So a leadoff double here in the top half of the ninth inning for the Royals. Second into the ballgame for David Howard. We mentioned earlier he's swinging the bat a lot better over the last couple weeks. He's gotten regular playing time with Greg Gagne on the disabled list. Royals have a little bit of a decision to make. Chico leaned was the everyday second baseman. He jumped the ball club. And he was on the disqualified list up until a couple days ago in which they put him on the active roster and then put him on waivers for purpose of giving him his unconditional release. So the Royals have had problems at second base. Howard with the great gloves swinging the bat better. He might be making a bid to be the everyday guy. Brent Main grounds back to the mound, staying at second base is Howard. Baseball Night in America brought to you by Calcium Rich Tums. Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium. By Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And Texaco, clean system three gasolines. Camden Yards, where the Orioles have built up a 9-1 lead on a 17-hit attack that is a season high and hits for them this season. Phil Hyatt fouls it back. Runner on at second base and one down. The Baltimore Orioles tonight got their leadoff man on base in seven of the eight innings. And in baseball, one of the truisms is if you get your leadoff man on, you will score. Well, they did it tonight. They did it often, they did it early, and they did it a lot. Grounded towards short, backhanded. Play made by Alexander, and a good one. Well, you got an idea if Cal Ripken didn't show up one of these days, the Orioles are still going to be in pretty good shape at that position. Danny Alexander was the shortstop coming through their minor league organization. Made that look pretty easy. That throw from the edge of the outfield grass. Amazing, huh? I want to thank some of the people who helped make our broadcast possible tonight. Executive producer of ABC Sports, Jack O'Hara. Coordinating producer of Baseball Network is John Filippelli. Our coordinating producer of ABC Sports, Kurt Gowdy Jr. Studio producers Lance Garrett and Bill Graff. Tonight's game here at Camden Yards was produced by Chris Glass, directed by John Neos, associate director Beth Preckler, technical director Dave Barlow, and assistant to the producer Robin Young. All of our crew here at Camden Yards tonight. Keith Lockhart, there are two down here, runner on at second. Kansas City Royals. Just been shut down in this one. A run on seven hits. The only run came in the fifth inning and a ground ball out. Erickson was in charge in this game and Clark's trying to get it done with as he goes ahead on the count 0 and 2. And they are up in the yard. Still two strikes. 
Baltimore with a chance to gain a game on the Red Sox who are leading the division. Red Sox have already lost. So Baltimore can pull within six with the win here tonight. One and two. One, two, delivery. Tough stop made by Zahn. Two and two. Clark wants so desperately to get this final strike <laughs> and get this thing over. Lockhart battling in his doubled and singled in his last two at bat. All right again, 2-2. Two -two. Down to first base. Matt over the bag. Baltimore wins it. Nine to one. Erickson the winner, six and six. Kevin Adrian of the loss, 11 and six, Paul Flitter. Big win for the Orioles. They come out after losing the first two games of this series to Kansas City. They go against the Royals' ace, Kevin Apier, 11 wins on the season. He leads the American League with that number. They got him out of the ball game early. They win one. They get one back. Got a chance to break even in the series with a win tomorrow. 17 hit attack for the Baltimore Orioles in their win tonight. For Paul Splitorf, I'm Gary Thorne. Thank you for joining us here at Camden Yards. Once again, our final score, Orioles win at 9-1.